Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto was the Lord of Monsters, Awakens Powerful Ability. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. To him, it was normal. Seeing small, hovering spirits is as easy as breathing for him since his childhood. They're his friends when he's alone, his guide when he's lost. But. The normal people he's a freak. And again, it is a normal response because he realized that most people just can't see spirits like him. The one who seems to believe his story is only that old man with a strange hat who sometimes visited him in the orphanage. Not that he'll meet that old man anymore though, considering he has been kicked out of the orphanage a year ago. But at the very least, he still has his friends to teach him stuff. Somewhere. Deep inside the most dangerous forest, the forest of death, a boy around six years old is currently crouching near a river like how a cat would. His face etches in a rather adorable but focused state as his cerulean eyes turn into slits. And why eh? Beside the boy, a small spirit of a cat, white and somewhat transparent in color, is currently mimicking the boy. No. It was the boy who learned this from the cat's beard. And thus, he waits. Splat. And not long after that, a fish jumped from the river, which was caught almost instantly by the boy with his experienced hands. And wasting no time, he ate the fish raw. This is his usual breakfast to start the day. Erp. I'm full what's my score just now? And why ao? Oh. The cat spirit simply said with a rather disappointed tone, and hearing this, the boy merely smiled rather wryly. There's no satisfying his fish hunting teacher. And help it then. As the boy walks through the forest, his appearance can be seen. Hair as golden as the sun with few streaks of shining silver lining and some strands. An eye as blue as the sea on his left socket and as red as blood on his right. And skin as pale as that of a legendary night creature. He is Naruto, and yes he lives in this forest of death with the other animals that treat this place as their own home. Blood is spilled every day because just as the name implies, this forest is full of predators that can easily kill any grown man with nothing but a claw. Naruto. He mostly ignores them, and the spirits always tell him when there's a wild beast or human around. And yes, he dodges human interaction too. Considering why he lives here in the first place, Naruto believes he has made a good decision to refuse any meeting with humans. He doesn't want something like half a year ago to happen again, after all. It took him about half an hour to reach his house, a large run-down house made of wood with the door being locked as tight as possible. In front of the said door, a few leaves are scattered, where Naruto slept last night. And yes, he sleeps on the outside, because for some reason, all of his friends forbid him from entering the house without proper preparation. But preparation, he doesn't know, and his friend also is yet to tell him about it. Naya, can you tell the earth to rise for me? Naya. Once Naruto said that the spirit of a cat on his shoulder jumped to the large clearing in front of his house. And with a few meows, the earth soon rises, creating a few thick boulders. And thus, Naruto slipped through those boulders until he is standing in the middle of the group of boulders around him. Inhale. Exhale. Gently, Naruto let nature soothe his weary body as he tries to connect himself deeper into the spiritual world. And as he doing this, the silver streak on his hair starts to glow mysteriously. Also, for reason unknown, every time he does this, his friends start to get as much distance as they can from him, as if his very presence spooked them on a deeper level. But maybe the reason is behind him. Who are you? As his spiritual energy starts to rise, Naruto can't see it a little. Hands. Each clad in white beautiful gloves is on his shoulders, caressing the part as loving as possible. Of course, Naruto can't feel it. Hell, it is hard enough to see those hands, and Naruto would need to give so much focus on his eyes to see the glimpse of transparent appendages. Whoever those hands belong to, they're very powerful, considering his friends kept reminding him the moment he becomes stronger, it would be easy for him to see higher class spirits and ghosts and vice versa. Those hands belong to a ghost, considering Naya immediately run the moment they appear. Spirit is a natural phenomenon created by the very nature itself, with the power to harness the elemental power they are born with. Ghost. Ghost has two types, one is regretful ghosts, which is the ghosts of people or animal that had deep regret in the last moment of their dying breath. As for the other ghost. It was the ghost who are haunting him. The vile ghost, a ghost who died with lingering regret and a high amount of extra ingredient. What kind of ingredient, you ask? Wrath, sadness, greed, pride, or even love. Whatever it is, his friend said that all kind of vile ghosts is dangerous, and he needs to tread carefully if he were to meet one. Exhale. Please guide me. As Naruto feels his spiritual energy reaches a nice amount of pressure, he went into his kata and whispered that as soft as he can. H-E-H-E-H-E. -h -e -h -e. 
Like the very essence of darkness itself being poured into his core, Naruto feels immense coldness as the limbs on his shoulders start to multiply like a mirage, until there are three pairs of hands clad in white gloves. Two went to his palms, two to his legs, and the last two to his chest. Thus, they start to correct his stance. His hands move slightly a little bit, narrowing, same with his legs, while his chest is being forced to straighten. And when everything's finished and done, Naruto left panting from the remnant of the vile energy coursed through his coil. Thank you. Hey -e 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 -e. Ignoring the chilling laugh of the unknown vile ghost, Naruto let calmness cover his whole body, as the multi-limbs started to fuse and back to his shoulders to caress said parts. Let's get to it. As the feeling of dread slowly disappears, Naruto starts his training regime. It is just a normal day for one Naruto Uzumaki. Later. As the sun began to come down, Naruto let the spiritual energy on his body be released and become the food of ghosts and spirits around him, be it the ones that he can see or those he can't. Sigh. But the last sigh, Naruto let out the last bit of energy, effectively making the glow on his hair turn off and his eyes no longer able to see some of the more powerful spirits and ghosts. Let's eat something before I go to sleep. Walking to the nearest bush of flowers, Naruto start to eat those flowers one by one, ignoring the bitter taste they left as he chew. As a medium most spirit calls him that, Naruto needs few foods and drinks, as his body automatically absorbs the spiritual energy from the air and transforms it into energy to use. However, flowers seem to increase the speed of the process by a rather nice margin, which means larger coils for him to use by tomorrow. Of course, he's sick of it. This kind of life is not supposedly the life here anyone could handle. But Naruto hold on, knowing with greater power, he would be able to go out from this place sooner or later, without any fear of getting himself bullied. Demon. Die. Your face sickens me. Don't you dare enter my shop. Demon. 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 Naruto let out a small smile here. Such nice memories he has. His smile is empty, but his heart. Unknown to Naruto, around him, the vile ghost behind him starts to multiple its hands once again, feeling the deep hatred and longing for love he has. Two become four. Four become eight. Eight become sixteen. And not long after that, Naruto is already deep in the middle of hundreds of vile ghosts' hands, each caressing him hauntingly. Like a touch of a lover. And again, he is not able to see them. Not yet. But when he can no one can expect what would happen to Naruto. A few years later. How's your expedition end up, dragon? Here is in Saratobi, the third Hokage asked that with a tone filled with melancholy as an Anbu with a dragon mask appear beside him. The man is his longtime friend, now becoming a true shadow for him, and him only. The boy is alright I was only able to get a glimpse of him before I got myself kicked out. Dragon snorted. Calling he got kicked out is a rather underestimation of his part. After all, in that forest of death, he has lost his right arm and would be his life too, if not for him quickly flickered off to somewhere safe. I'm sorry to order you to do that. Hiruzen said with regret in his words. Nonetheless, Dragon merely shook his head, uncaring about something as simple as losing one arm to an invisible apparition. Yes, it was the hand that killed hundreds or thousands of his enemy, but to him, a successful mission is always worth a hand. As I said, don't mind it so, do you have any plan? As Dragon leans his back against the wall, he stares at Hiruzen that starts to rub away his headache. Then again, Dragon can't fault the man. Ninja and samurai are a norm in these days and ages, but evil spirits that can hurt you. Now that's new. I don't know. From all the books I have read, I only know that the ghost who's haunting Naruto-kun is a woman that died several hundred years ago and was treated like a deity in some villages, as for her trait, I know nothing. Hmm. Dragon soon rubs his mask in confusion. This is a new experience for him, after all. Nonetheless, several minutes later, he snapped his fingers. Those villages that treat this ghost as a deity, how did they pray? Seeing where his friend coming to, Hiruzen took a rather large and thick book from his shelf and flipped several unneeded pages and went to the page he remembers. The page that told him about the ritual prayer. Here, it only says that those who want to pray need to don the traditional kimono, that's all. As the Hokage put the book on the table, Dragon walked to it and read it, his lone hand rubbing his chin in a rather calm manner despite losing a hand. What? He's a veteran. Losing a hand means nothing to him. After all, he still has his other hand, his two feet, and hell, he also still has his teeth to bite someone to death. So yeah, losing a hand is nothing to someone of Dragon's caliber. Worth a try as the Jonin's free. He said in the end with a carefree shrug of his shoulders, which got him a deadpan from his best friend who is also his boss. Jonin's, yeah, they should be free until next Monday. After all, the next Jonin's team will be paired with their Jonin teacher next Monday, and thus, those Jonin's won't go anywhere and currently have some free time. So yes, they're free. 
B-O-O-D, summon them tomorrow for a short S rank, C-I-A-O. Why? Before Harrison can't say anything, his friend already flickered off to somewhere unknown. Geez, what a great shadow he has, Harrison thought to himself while smoking his tobacco. Minato. For a small second, Harrison's eyes held a deep regret as he stares into the picture of the fourth Hokage, the father of the boy currently trapped inside a forest. Trapped, not by beasts, not by ghosts. But by my inability to protect him. Harrison doesn't really care about the boy being Jinchuriki or anything like that. But now that years have passed, he only wants to let the boy know. No the Kanoha will no longer see him as a monster, no longer they will talk behind his back, refusing to sell their goods to him. If they still do. Well, Hiruzen will show them the reason he's called a god of shinobi back in the day. Tomorrow. Alright, men and woman. Today we're going to do an S-rank mission. Walking like how a general should, Dragon now dons a rather lax kimono for attire, while his lone hand holding a lone incense. Of course, across from him, four elite jonins of Kanoha are present, donning their kimono and holding an incense in their right hand. Though, their eyes show confusion. Except for Guy. Yosh. You look dashing in your kimono, my rival. After this mission, I shall run 1000 times across Kanoha and then 1T. Bam. Ruthlessly, Dragon flickered to Guy and grabbed the man by the head and doing a good deed to Earth by planting a rare tree called Guy. Alright. As I said before. Completely uncaring about the planted man's condition, Dragon then pointed his index finger to Kakashi, which make the masked man blink several times in confusion. Kakashi. You shall be our front guard, keep your Sharingan active and don't cover it, if you sense any kind of hostility, back away, and if you can't, sacrifice yourself so that we can run. Ahaha, yes sir. As a former Anbu, Kakashi knew of Dragon's sometimes strange antics and isn't that surprised by his words. But his teammates. They're looking at Dragon as if he's having a second and third head. Sir, question. Not loud. I believe Harrison has told you four about this mission, right? So, no question. If Glare could kill, the dragon would have died by now from the glare sent at him by Asuma. But because they can't, Asuma merely inhaled a sharp amount of air through his teeth to calm his anger. Beside him, Kurunai let out a small titter. Sir, a question please. Of course. Anything for a beautiful lady. Kakashi would have laughed by now when dragon become a puppy, once Kurunai decides that she needs some questions answered before they advance to this strange mission. The only reason he didn't laugh is simply that he know that Asuma's anger will go to him if he did. Beside the woman, Asuma is gritting his smoke and in incoming anger. This mission, it's a simple escort mission, right? So, why four of us? That bastard here is and didn't tell you for anything. Hearing the question from Kurunai, Dragon's antics change into that of Sirius, getting the four across of him shivered in fear by his tone alone. Of course, said four also widened their eyes when they heard the man calling the reigning hookage bastard. That's new. Before any of them can reprimand the man, Dragon sits down with crossing legs. Alright, let me explain the short story. So ghost. The idiot actually believe me, I have fought vile ghosts back in the days I got a mission in demon country, and I still survive. This one, the deity that protects Naruto, is a vile ghost of the highest degree that she can no longer be called as a simple vile ghost anymore. She has been worshipped for hundreds of years for protection in some rural villages, I don't know why she chooses to protect Naruto privately, but whatever the reason is, I don't want to lose my other hand to her. Serious. The aura of dragon is full of seriousness that none of the jonins can become disbelief. But still, many strange things happened in the world every single day but ghosts. This takes the cake. Alright, then what should we do sir? Only the elite jonins are invited to this mission. Not because they have the power to fight the enemy, but because they have enough power to run just in case their enemy becomes antagonistic. This is what the four realize after Dragon finished his explanation. We're going to walk no kunai, no tree jumping, no using chakra, but just walk, once we there, we're going to give our respect to this deity before we talk to Naruto of course, just I said before, if you sense any kind of hostility, run, not as if your life depends on it, but because your life really depends on it, understand. But sir you said I should activate Sharingan. That was a joke, Kakashi, if all of you understand now, then let's go. And thus, the five start their slow walks into the forest of death with dragon leading them. My rival, for once I'm kinda scared. I said without his usual confidence. Though, his large grin is still on his face. Yeah, me too. Bakashi answered, knowing where his childhood friend coming from. As a Tijutsu specialist, Guy would be a sitting duck if he meet a ghost, simply because ghosts cannot be hit by anything physical. As for him, he's an Injutsu specialist, so he show. Oh, I forgot to say another thing vile ghosts are immune to all attacks except holy prayers, so I'll repeat what I said before. 
if you sense hostility, run. Okay. Shit. And thus, Kakashi widens his lone eye, while his body also starts to tremble from fear. Fucking shit. He should have come late in this mission. But Naruto. And they are you you you, I sense humans. The boy looks at most 12 in age from his body, but eyes like that of a war veteran stop his kata when his best friend whispered that to his ear. Is that so? Ninjas. I don't K-N-O-O-O-W I'm sorry P.O. It's alright let's just watch for now. If his friend can't decide what are they, then those people are probably civilians or ninjas posing as civilians. Whichever it is, for now, he's going to watch. After all, if he were to send his friend, those people will die, no, but a no if about that. She's just that sadistic when it came to other humans except him, ninja or not. Exhale. A large amount of air exhaled from Naruto's lips as he closed his eyes and relaxed his body. And as he does this, behind him, a shadowy figure of a very tall humanoid can be seen. A pure white dress clad a large, imposing, but beautiful figure, while her arms are clad by long, soft-looking white gloves. On her head, a large sun hat is resting, totally shadowing her eyes to her nose. The only thing visible is her long hair that reaches her waist and the large evil grin etched on her lips. Popopopio. Of course, after Naruto released all of his pent-up spiritual energy, he let his friends snack on them, as he merely took a seat right in front of the rundown house where he has lived for years. The house, no the shrine is now no longer looks rundown and seems like a proper shrine now, ever since Naruto knows just who is behind those doors. Another friend of his, but let's not talk about it right now. For now. Let's see just where are those humans coming to. Hachi-chan. Don't attack them if they come here, okay? P-O-O-O-O. His friend grumbled, nonetheless, she nodded and gave him an evil smile, probably because of her full stomach. Well, it would look evil to most people. But to Naruto. Her smile is beautiful. Thank you. After he said that, Naruto closed his eyes and ignored Hachishaku that took a seat behind him and places him on her lap, as if he was some kind of baby. Once she did this, Hachi started to do her usual routine. Which is to grope him from behind using her large hands clad in silky gloves. Oh well, he has been used to this routine of them since a long, long time ago. With Team Dragon. Sir, I wonder if you can tell us about this deity. True, what do you want to know? As the team of five walks down the narrow path of the forest with Dragon as their guide, Kurinai can't help but ask. She has a feeling that their path will still be long before they arrive at their destination. Uh, her identity. From what she can conclude from Dragon's previous explanation, the deity seems to be a woman, and thus, she called it with her suffix to not offend said deity. After all, from what she knows of myth, most deity is omnipresent. Pachashaku-sama. Dragon started, his eyes never stopping to look around as he said this. This forest is home to many wild and dangerous beasts, not only vile ghosts, so he needs to keep his eyes always looking. From the legends, she is a woman about 8 feet in height, thus her name derived from. At first, she was like most vile ghosts, albeit more vicious than the others. She killed people, left and right, until in the end, holy men and women were called. Here, Dragon paused, seemingly confused for a small second about which turn he should take. Though, not a second later, he took the left side. But those holy men and women were killed brutally in a single night. And having no choice, the villagers in the end decide to create a shrine for Hachishaku-sama and gave her sacrifices, which successfully drove her away. Thus, most villages at that time start following suit and creates their shrines for Hachishaku-sama and prayed to her. Again, Dragon paused on his walks when the path split. Though this time, he decides to take the right path. Who would have thought that walking was so hard? And again, this is probably because he was used to jumping on trees to go from point A to point B. So, she is evil. Evil or good is not always a good question, my dear. After all, humans have their rules, and so do ghosts, vile or not. Here, none of the Jonans understand what the hell Dragon was saying. Though, before they can ask about it, Dragon cut them off. We're here be on your best behavior and just follow what I'm going to do. Gulp. At the same time, the four Jonans gulp down their saliva in a mix of fear and nervousness. Yes, sir. They see him. The moment they reach a rather large clearing with a few large boulders sticking in the middle, they see the boy. Naruto. The boy is meditating, or at the very least, he looks like someone who is meditating. And he is hovering. Isn't that the jutsu of second and third Tsuchikage? Lower your heads. Though, when their leader hissed at them, the four quickly lower their gazes and start to follow the man once again. He is walking at a very slow pace toward Naruto. No, not Naruto, but the stone slab beside the boy. The grave. They realize when they see some burned out incenses sticking out in the small jar in front of the grave. 
I pay respect to you, the Lord, and may I be permitted to talk a little bit with the boy. There is huge pressure coming out from Naruto's direction after Dragon said this. No, not Naruto. Something something behind him. And this terrifies the four Jonans. They're terrified, greatly. Ignoring this, Dragon merely burns his incense and places it in the small jar. Clap. But the small clap, Dragon finished his prayer, then walked and took a seat across of Hovering Boy in a polite manner. And thus, one by one, the Jonans start to repeat the prayer and follow their leader's example. In the end, all five are sitting in front of Naruto and Siza positions, though the Jonans are slightly behind Dragon, as they choose to let him talk in their place. They don't want to unknowingly offend something that they can't see or attack. You five are daring, I'll give you that. Naruto let out a small smile as he opens his eyes. Kindness can be seen inside those mismatched eyes of his and cannot be hidden even with the huge dark pressures coming from his back. And seeing this, the four Jonans slightly relax their guards. Ha, hey, anyway I am sent by Lord Third to escort you out from here, Naruto-san. Their request is only to talk with Naruto a little. Time is their essence here. So no beating around the bush for them. Suddenly, the boy moves his right arm and grabs something in the air, all the way, his eyes never leaving their direction. I can see that from your mask and no, don't cut him, Hachi. The second sentence is said to no one, but every normal human there can feel how the pressures behind Naruto start to multiply. Whatever deity behind the boy she is getting angry. You don't mind, do you? I mean, you've been here for six years Aurea. Six in your years, but twelve for me. Here, Naruto let out a small grin of happiness as he touched his stomach using the hand that grabbed the air just seconds ago. The said hand then rests on his thigh once again. They don't know what the gesture means. Then again, they can't see what he can. Twelve. Yeah, there's a huge doom of holy seal surrounding this place. And the seal is strong enough that the time itself becomes slower in here, twice. So, yeah, I actually reached 18 a few months ago. The boy then laughed in a carefree manner a little after that. Do them, he looks happy to talk with them, the only living beings he sees after a long 12 years. And this puts small, melancholy smiles on their faces. I see, congratulations for reaching adulthood then. Ha, eh, thanks. Silent. Both the five and Naruto become silent after that, though the silence is rather comforting if one ignores the building angered pressure coming from Naruto's back. So, how is it? Dragon asked once he saw that Naruto kind of doesn't want to answer his question. And once Dragon said this, Naruto let out a small, sad smile. Sure but I'm going to say my farewell to another friend of mine first, and it's alright Hachi, you're coming with me, so stop your anger. The second sentence is pointed to the deity behind him, and thus, both Dragon and his team merely let out a small sigh of relief after they heard that he is indeed coming with them. Of course, when are you going to say your farewell? To the four Jonans, they're kind of curious about the reason their captain suddenly getting a little bit pushy. For some reason, Naruto looks understood and merely lets out a small smile. When the moon is high in the sky because right now, the door is yet to open. Naruto said mysteriously, which make the four Jonans raise one of their eyebrows in confusion. Door? What kind of door, Yuzumaki san? Takashi asks, getting a questioning look from Naruto. Huh, the door to the shrine, of course. The boy calmly pointed to something behind him using his thumb. And when they look at the clearing behind him, they shiver. There's nothing there except a normal looking clearing. Yuzumaki san, there's nothing there. Huh, seriously? For the first time since the group of five meet Naruto, they saw him widen his eyes in pure shock. And after he looked to his back for a small second, he returned his attention to them with a wry smile. I lived here for 12 years, and it is a ghost house all this time geez, and I spent months renovating it. They don't know what to say to answer that. Nonetheless, they nodded. It must be vexing. 804, 805. Still sitting in Siza positions, Dragon and his group look so tired on their faces. Well, except for Guy who chooses to start his training at the edge of the clearing to make sure he won't disturb any vile ghosts or deity around Naruto. You five are hard-headed, I'll give you that. Naruto snorted in front of them, amused, though the four merely gave him small stink eyes for his comment. Yes, he did say that they should come back tomorrow and don't need to wait for him. Something about spiritual energy in this place is dark and dense enough that it could harm normal humans if they can remember right. But no. It wasn't the real problem. The main problem is that they have been waiting for damn 20 hours. They thought the boy was joking when he said the time in this place is twice longer than the outside, but now they have experienced this, they choose to accept his explanation about the time. But still, they would need to wait for another two hours before the moon is high in the sky. They arrived around 1 pm. This mean, they would need to normally wait 11 hours before the late night could come. But in this place. 11 become 22. 
Shut up just shut up please. Bakashi said, panting because he is not used to the so-called thick spiritual energy around him. Hearing this, Naruto merely let out a small titter. Plank. Plank. They heard it. After two torturous hours have passed, Dragon and his squad began to hear it. No, not only that. They see it. Slowly, they see the apparition of a huge hunting shrine appear behind Naruto. And seeing this alone, their human instinct began to scream, screaming at them to run as far as possible from this place. But no it's not like they don't want to. They simply can't. This pressure coming from the shrine is hundred no, thousandfold heavier compared to that of Hachishaku-sama. This is the pressure of a real deity. Oh, you guys can see it then. Naruto said as he stand and patted some dust from his pants. And as if the pressure is nothing for him, they see the boy slowly walking to the shrine until he stands across the door. It's me, Naruto open please. Plank. 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 The door opened, and what comes out of it will be nightmares for the five jonins every time they go to sleep in the future. Priestesses. Yes, priestesses with regal kimonos and holding a stick with bells in their hands. One, two, four, eight. Again and again, priestesses started to come out of the door, each donning the same regal-looking kimono and holding the same bells. Until in the end, the entrance is full of them. No, this is not enough to make the jonin shiver in fear. What scares them is the fact none of those priestesses have faces. This means that all of them are ghosts vile ghosts too nonetheless. Plank. Plank. The sound of bells being sounded together started to make their hearts drum in fear. Fear of death to the unknown. Okay. Wait a bit guys I won't be long. In a rather carefree manner, Naruto turned around and waved his hand at them. And after that, he enters the door that shows nothing but darkness to them. Plank. Plank. Stairs. And the five stiffen in nothing but pure fear when hundreds of faceless priestesses turned their faces at them. I regret my decision to stay. Very softly, Dragon said that. Of course, behind him, the four jonins can only nod, so slow as if their neck will break if they use more force. Though right now, they don't want to start pointing fingers. No, they only hope that Naruto comes out from that door. Past. With Naruto. Aoi chan, I'm here. The inside of the shrine is huge. Though instead of calling it a shrine, Naruto would choose to call this place a throne room. Large, the room is large enough to fit thousands of humans if they stand very close to each other. Actually. Left and right, faceless priestesses can be seen, each pointing their blank faces at him as Naruto walks to the throne in the middle. And yes, they're standing side to side, so close that there is simply no room for air in there. How did he know? He slipped and got himself lost there a few years ago. And let's just say, while it was very nice getting himself flanked left and right by priestesses, it also frustrating after a few days. What? He is a healthy, hot-blooded human male. And it's not like those dolls have consciousness except for Aoi's. Yes Aoi's consciousness is inside those human-like bodies. So when he played getting lost inside thousands of faceless women, it was actually him playing with Aoi, you know, like bees with their hive mind or something like that. And again, it was also a test of whether he can go upstairs or not. But let's talk about it next time. As for the exact number of priestesses Aoi has there around 5000 in total, including the few hundreds on the outside. Those are the number of priestesses Aoi has killed. C-H-I-R-I-R-I-R-I-N. The dark, haunting, and inhuman sound of Aoi then can be heard as Naruto stand right in front of a large throne inside this large room. And sitting on it, a monster from the human's nightmare can be seen. Well, that would be what people say if they see Aoi's appearance. To Naruto, she's beautiful. And again, he's slightly biased when it comes to Aoi and Hachishaku. Not that it was his fault. Aoi and Hachishaku have been his friends, his mothers, his sisters, his aunties, his guardians, and of course his lovers. So yes, no matter how they look to other humans, to Naruto, they're eternally beautiful. Large, Aoi's upper body is almost as large as Hachishaku with nothing to cover her large perking up breasts. On her sides, six arms are sewed into her body, all six were the hands of those she killed, with two pairs being nailed into the rock boulders flanking her throne. The only pair that is free is her lower arms, the one with more monster-like qualities compared to the other four, which has normal woman's qualities. Aoi's face is human-like, though with jaws that can open as wide as that of a snake and black sclera, and yellow orbs for eyes. Behind her, longer than Hachishaku, black tresses trail down into the floor, and each strand currently slithering toward him like those of snakes that see prey. As for the last, Aoi's bottom. From the waist down, Aoi no longer looks human. Large, long, and thick, her snake-like body is literally circling this large room, hidden by thousands of dead priestesses. Yes, yes, I'm coming. And this monster with the upper body of a human woman is currently glaring at him. 
In response, Naruto merely smiled happily at her, knowing the reason for her anger. And after he said this, Naruto jumped onto the throne. His body caught in her embrace almost instantly, though her lower arms are currently hugging him a little bit too tight than usual. Feeling this, Naruto's smile become a little bit softer as he let his face rest on her wide neck. He smells jasmine not surprising, since her diet consists of jasmine and some medium animals, ever since she been sealed here. Dreerin. I know. Unlike Hachishaku, Aoi can't talk. Nonetheless, Naruto can understand her. And when he heard the sadness in her voice, Naruto wraps his arms around her neck and looked up. The woman herself looked down with her normal, monster-like grin. However, he sees sadness in her eyes. And it really breaks his heart when he sees her like this. But I can't keep staying here. It's been 10 years since we met, but I only success to unseal one of your hands. C-H-I-R-I-R-I-R-I-N. I know you're thankful and don't mind waiting for 40 more years, but I do, I don't want you to be sealed for that long. It's been hundreds of years since Aoi is sealed. He doesn't want to prolong her suffering. He wants to go out and search for any way to fasten her unsealing. Jiren. I will miss you. Is what she said. And hearing this, Naruto place one of his hands on the back of her head to make her lean down even more until their forehead is touching each other. I will miss you too. Closing his eyes, Naruto let his lips touch Aoi's nose in a loving peck. Of course, the female monster in front of him isn't satisfied by this. Hundreds of black, silky strands then leap at Naruto, winding around his feet, body, and even arms. The only one that is free is his face. Said face is staring at Aoi with nothing but love. With Dragon and his squad. How long have we been waiting? Twelve hours, sir. Well, look at the bright side, those faceless priestesses are no longer around except those two. Dragon and his squad still can't move a muscle. About eleven hours ago, the faceless priestesses had gained some pink on their cheeks, as if blushing. And one by one, they began to enter the room through the door once again, leaving nothing but two apparitions to guard the door in question. Yes, it's only two. But their pressure is still so dark and heavy that they can't move anything except their necks. It makes them feel powerless. And in a way, they're indeed powerless. Yo, guys, did you all wait LONG? Fortunately for them, at last Naruto comes out of the door with nothing covering his body. And as he walked toward them, a jump was in each of his steps. Behind him, the large haunting shrine slowly disappear as if it was nothing but an illusion, though the last faceless priestesses that were guarding the door a few seconds ago, now flank Naruto as if becoming his guards. Must you come out nude like that, Naruto-san? Kurinai said with a slight twinge of blush on her cheeks. Yes, the boy's hide is like that of 12 years old boy. But he already said it himself. He is 18, and it's showing on his body. Muscles. Lean they are, muscles still can be seen in some parts of Naruto's body. Muscles that lean towards speed instead of strength, and Kurinai know that those muscles can only appear after years and years of hard training. Fortunately for the group, Naruto's waist area is blurring, as if something is currently covering it, so that none of them can see the thing. Yosh. Naruto-san. I see you have great muscles like those of Kakashi's. I is happy. Gurren I is shyly peeking while throwing her face. Asuma that seeing the sucking his teeth in jealousy. Kakashi and Dragon are impressed. Though nonetheless, they don't seem to care that much. Thanks, guys, Aoi destroyed my clothes a few days ago come here, you too. After the boy said that, he stretches his hand to the two priestesses behind him. One stepped forward, and to the human's eyes, she blurred so suddenly, and in her place, now Naruto is using a black bodysuit for the top and jet black hakama for the bottom, complete with white socks and jetta sandals. Another one stepped forward, and after she did the same as the previous one, now Naruto is using a large, loose white regal heiori above the black bodysuit. Onikiri reforged, on Yoji. Seeing this, none of the jonins can understand what happened and choose to keep silent. One thing perked their interest though. Few days. Bakashi asks as in the end, he and the others can stand up after the two faceless priestesses can no longer be seen. Yep, I can manipulate the time seals inside Aoi's shrine, as long as I'm inside, though the limit for the ratio is 1 to 12. The boy looks uncaring, but as he straightens his attires, everyone starts to calculate the ratio the boy just said. We waited for 12 hours so you were there for 6 days. Yes. Not the tiniest hint of lies on his face. If nothing else, the boy's face looks like someone who is saying. Is there any problem with that? No there's not a problem with that, really. But. I thought you said you were just saying your farewell. This time, Asuma is the one who asks that, a hint of disbelief on his face. How can a few words of farewell can last for whole six days? Well. Here, Naruto had a small nervousness on his face as he turned around and lead them toward the exit. 
His next answer, though, is one that made them surprised, albeit more confused than before. Divine Yakai has so much stamina that's all I can say. What did he mean by that now? Later. Oh, the scent of fresh airs, how I have missed you. Was the word said by Naruto once he and the others came out of the forest of death. His eyes are starry. Like a person who never smells air in the first place. Well, now that the five came out too, they also took notice of the difference. The air in Naruto's previous place is thick with an aura of strangeness and death. It is as if his previous place is a place where a great massacre once happened in the past. So, where are you guys going now? Firstly first, it's not you guys, but us, so, let us go to the Hokage office, I need to report the successful mission to Hokage-sama. Here, Naruto let a small, but kind smile and shook his head. He has something more important to do instead of meeting someone. Even if that someone were to be his Hokage Jiji. You guys better do report without me I'm going to the shrine near the red light district. Seeing the kind smile the boy has, but seriousness in his tone, Dragon dares himself to step forward and ask. May I ask why, Yuzumaki-san? Well it's simple really. The boy once again turned around, giving them the side of his back. And then, he says it. The civilians I'll meet in the way will probably draw out my ire if that were to happen, the tragedy that happened years ago will probably repeat itself. Red. That's what they feel when they heard such seriousness come from Naruto's lips. The tragedy that happened a few years ago. Dragon and his squad gain grim looks on their faces when they remember said incident. It was something that came out of nightmare inducing. Something that can even make people who saw Chihaz massacre trembles in fear. Yes, it was just that scary. Alright, then I hope you may be kind enough to open your door if Hokage-sama decides to visit. H-H-H-H-A. Already a few meters away from them, Naruto heard Dragon's word and laughed. And his laugh is rather pleasant to hear. Like the beautiful chimes of bells that soothe their weary hearts. Of C-O-U-R-S-E there's no way I would close my door for my Jiji. And with that as Naruto's last words, Dragon nodded, pleased. Alright team, let's make our report. Yes sir. After some minutes of walking, Naruto's smile lower a little bit, seeing the state of the red light district that may look better from the outside perceptive. Naruto. He lived here years ago. He can see some new prostitutes looking beautiful on the face, but behind those thick makeup is faces that look so weary because they're yet to gain rest time. He can see more beggars filling the street. And he can even see some people laying in the small alleys, dead. The state of this place is becoming worse than the state from years ago. And Naruto just knows the very root of this problem. Yakai if you were to do this to Konoha, I wouldn't mind. But, the red light district is my turf. I won't let you keep tarnishing this place. Popopopio. Sensing the building anger in Naruto's heart, behind him, his very first friend in Shikigami, Hachishaku starts to cackle in her way. Her hair also starts to hover threateningly as her grin becomes wider and wider. Blood she wants blood. Thus, as Naruto walks to a single large building, on the ground where he stepped, large trenches can be seen. It was as if large sharp weapons were dragging themselves behind Naruto. And they want blood. With Dragon and his squad. I see, I'm glad to hear that, thank you so much, you five. As Dragon finished his report, Hiruzen is left smiling happily, and on his face, a serene look can be seen. Hiruzen about this Aoi. Yes, I remember about that too in my book. Is she dangerous? Instead of answering, Hiruzen merely took out his thick book and flipped some pages until he reached the page that he wanted. And with a sad smile, he let the five read the information by themselves. Of course, they do it without further ado. This this is disgusting. Kurinai, as a woman herself, can't help but comment after she finished her reading. As for the other four, they merely keep silent, not knowing what to say. Yes, humans have been vile creatures since the dawn of time, but to stab their protector and fetter to the snake is just. Disgusting. Doesn't it? Even I wonder what our ancestors thought when they did such a thing. Hiruzen said calmly after he received his book from Dragon and once again place it on his shelf. It took him a few years to gather information about ghosts, yakai, and any other things, then gather them all in one book. The book is very precious, something that would be Naruto's once he died. For now, he will keep searching for more information to add to the book. And yes. The name of his book of supernatural is the book. Simple is sometimes the best. But while I agree that she had a rough past, she is still classified as an evil deity, are we really going to let her be? Asuma said while scratching the back of his head. And yes, this Aoi had a rough and puke-inducing past, nonetheless, right now she is a deity cursed by her hate to kill. Are they really going to let her be? And do tell me, what can us do to a deity that has killed thousands of holy maidens, son? Pirazin asked with amusing eyes. 
The snake deity of death has slain more than thousands of holy maidens, and holy maidens themselves are supposedly her counter. If someone who supposedly can hurt an evil deity is dead, what can the ninjas like them do? Right, I think I'll choose to fight humans instead. Thus, Hiruzen laughed a little bit after he heard that from the lips of his son. Of course, on his mind, he's thinking about another thing. Tomorrow. Tomorrow he is going to visit the boy. For now, he is going to let the boy have some time to clean his house. But Naruto. Walking out of the prostitution house, Naruto is holding a small purple ball in his right hand. And said ball is dripping with blood. Hachi-chan. P.O. Not even waiting for long, the bloodied ball in his right hand was suddenly gone, eaten by the vile ghost dwelling on him. And those humans that saw him holding a ball dripping with blood are now rubbing their eyes and in the end, chalking this up as their imagination. And thus, Naruto continues his walk to the shrine where he slept years ago before he was driven out to the forest of death. Home sweet home here I come. Despite thinking like this, Naruto's smile is slightly bitter. Let's just hope nothing was vandalized by some barbarians. Alright, I think this looks pretty good. Small it is, Naruto smiled. When he finished climbing the rather long stairs, Naruto arrived at his house. Well, more like a place where he slept and take cover from rain and snow years ago, but you should know this already. Shikigami, rise do your job now. As a rather powerful burst of spiritual energy come out from Naruto's body, the fallen leaves around him start to gain bodies in a shape of white almost translucent bubbling energy. And one by one, they start to clean the shrine and the large clearing in front of the said shrine. As for Naruto, he let himself sit in the vestibule of the shrine, watching his created Shikigami doing their jobs. This is never getting old. Fortunately, he bought some tea on the way here. Another burst of energy came out of Naruto's body, and this time, the one gaining a chibi body is the small leaf floating on the small lake. And without any order, the cute Shikigami uses its power to make some water float in front of it. Another burst, fire Shikigami is created, and it quickly summons a fire under the small floating ball of water. Shiranya, get me a small glass please. From Naruto's fingertip, a spirit in the shape of a white cat appears, and with a few meows from it, the ground in front of Naruto rise, and glass made of clay appear. Thanks. And why eh? After that, the earth spirit is back into his body to sleep. Yes, Naya is just lazy like that. But in a few minutes, in the end, the water is boiled, and after Naruto placed the tea leaves in the glass, he placed the glass under the floating, boiling water. Of course, his small shikigami of water slowly poured the whole water into the glass and start to use its power to stir the water in question. Once done, Naruto took the glass and take a sip while closing his eyes. Sigh. Ah. So peaceful. Po. Yes, yes, I will sit on your lap now, Hachi-chan. A smile appear on Naruto's lips once he heard the telltale of impatient from his best friend. And thus, he let the tall woman grab him and place him on her lap like usual, where her hands begin to get busy. Yeah. This is peaceful to him. Flashback. You. What are you? Fang's bared, a woman with a beautiful body clad in a beautiful kimono, glared at him with such hate-filled eyes. Of course, all of her teeth are sharp like a vampiric beast, while her hair begins to get longer, and the tips gain sharp hook-like appendages. I am Naruto, madam it's a pleasure to meet you. A soft smile appear on Naruto's lips, though whatever expression Hachishaku made behind him, only make the yakai woman in front of him backing herself away into the corner. Fear is definitely on her face. No, forget fear. The woman is terrified. He don't take another step. Of course, Naruto ignored this altogether and merely continue his walk toward the yakai woman. Until in the end, he's right in front of her with both eyes narrowing coldly. Her hair that just a second ago threatened him. All of it is now on the floor, they have been cut into very, very tiny pieces. He, Fear. She's scared. Is what can be seen on the woman's face. Madam, as I told you, my name is Naruto, and I just want to tell you something about your house. Gently, like a touch of that of a lover, Naruto trail his five fingers from the madam's chin, down to her chest, until in the end, all fingers are stopping above her right chest, where Yakai usually has their second heart placed. Next time you decide to make humans your foods don't you dare do it on my turf. I I I, unders Jaya. Unfortunately for the woman, Naruto dug his fingers into her chest and pulls out a beating, purple ball from it. So fast that by the time he turned around, the woman can only scream in pain in a rather inhuman way. No Naruto doesn't care at all. Hell, actually. Next time to make mistake like this, I will rip your last heart. It was a statement. Not a question, but a statement. And after Naruto said his statement, he walked out of the room like the gentleman he is. Of course, before he closes the door, he let out a small smile at the woman rolling on the ground. Thanks for giving me some of your precious time, madam, I'm grateful. 
Look at you now boy, you went from a boy who was afraid of his own shadow to a boy who is able to control his own abilities to this degree. Under a rather large and shady tree, Naruto is floating like usual, smiling bashfully. Across from him, the old man who he always think of as his own grandfather, is sitting calmly on a small earthy stool Naruto told Shiranya to make. Of course, in the middle of them, a small table is present, with two steaming clay cups that can be seen on top of it. The steam coming out from the newly made tea, of course. Yes, I have learned so much under the guidance of Hachishaku and Aoi. Naruto said after he took a small sip of his naturally brewed tea. Sigh. Of course, the old man followed suit and let out his relaxed sigh from the soft taste of the tea. Hearing that from you really make my day, my boy. As the third Hokage says this, his eyes watch as a few leaves levitate around, cleaning small patches of dust around the shrine. It's indeed full of mysteries. So, do tell me Jiji what happens to the Konoha when I am away. I walked down the red light district yesterday and it seems to change a little bit. Not really a little bit, but the man seems to have already so many problems on his face, and thus, Naruto doesn't want to make his burden heavier by giving the man some information that he can't help with. Yakai's problem in the red light district is his to solve, not the Hokage. Anyway. The place has changed. And not in a good way too. Sigh. This time, the sigh that came out of Hokage's lips is filled with so much negativity that Naruto can't see some vile ghosts readily snacking on those feelings. Unfortunately, yes there are so many things that happen that I honestly don't know where to start. Once he heard this, Naruto leaned his back to Hachishaku's chest, letting his head rest on the large breasts clad in white silk, where his head would submerge fully into them were it not for her white dress. An A R U U U. She complained, also knowing this and wanting him to rest his head inside her valley. Though Naruto merely let out a small wry smile at her, then pinch her a little on the thigh. Later, I'm having a conversation here. Is what his action basically says. Doesn't like the situation, but can't help it because what Naruto wants is her top priority, Hachishaku, in the end, chooses to rest her chin on top of his head, covering him with more shadow of her hat on top of the shadow of the tree. And this shadow is visible to Hiruzen. Oh. Don't mind it, and also, I don't mind wherever you start, old man. We have a rather long time to catch up to. Hearing this, Hiruzen nodded his head rather mind absently, still rather dumbstruck and questioning himself just where is the shadow coming from. Oh well, if Naruto said don't mind it, then he won't mind it. It's probably some ghost stingy. And thus, the grandfather and his grandson began to catch up with each other. Hiruzen tells the boy about some events that happened in the past, bad and good. While well, Naruto merely tells the old man about some of the friends he made. No of course not all of them. After all, it's not something that he can tell anyone just like that. If he did, well. There will be consequences. Later. The sun began to set when Hiruzen excused himself, and Naruto escorted the man back to the shrine's gate. He has placed some barrier across the gate, after all. Anyway, after Hiruzen already left, Naruto is now standing in front of the Tori gate, watching the Kanoha that slowly lighting up their lanterns. Let us go, Hachi-chan I really want to try some of their snacks. There is no verbal answer. However, Naruto feels it when a pair of hands clad in white silk gloves place themselves on his shoulders. And knowing this is how she says I'll be here, Naruto walks slowly into the village. Let's see if something is interesting enough in the village. Everything is a little bit better than yesterday. The number of beggars is almost the same, but the prostitutes themselves look somewhat looks better compared to yesterday. Their makeup is no longer as thick as the first time he met them. Of course, despite thinking like this, he can feel it as several invisible yakai are currently watching his every movement. Subordinates of the madam, probably. Now, you are probably confused already. What is yakai? Just as he said a few years ago, ghosts split into two types. Normal ghosts, and vile ghosts. Spirit. There are also two of them. One is that of naturally made spirit, just like Sharanya who were made when a small piece of the essence of Earth's met with a pure and clean spiritual energy. The purity and cleanness of the energy decide whether the spirit is good or evil. The other one is cursed spirits. The essence of cursed spirits is simple. Curse. The curse can affect anything. Element, furniture, animal, corpse, and even living humans. Basically said, anything can become a cursed spirit, be it a living being or not. And because their existence is made of curses which is another way to call an essence of negativity, cursed spirits live on by feeding on negative feelings. Most high-level cursed spirits don't need to eat that much negativity though. And those of deity level don't even need to eat negativity at all. Yes, like Aoi. And yes, she's a deity level cursed spirit and chooses to eat flowers and animals instead. Anyway. Cursed spirits are naturally invisible to human eyes, just like ghosts. However, unlike ghosts, it is rather easy for them to make themselves visible. 
Of course, when they are visible, they can be hit, and thus, cursed spirits rarely show themselves to humans in fear of said human being ninja or samurai in disguise. As for ghosts, it is the opposite. It is very hard for them to make themselves visible. However, even if they are visible, there is nothing that can touch them, except some things like holy prayer, etc., etc. And unlike most cursed spirits, ghosts can affect humans whether they're visible or not. This is what makes ghosts much more dangerous than cursed spirits. However, most invisible creatures that showed themselves to humans is cursed spirit, and thus, human called them by another name. Yakai. Though of course, yakai itself is a general term that basically means. Yo which means attractive bewitching and calamity. And. I which means mystery and wonder. So actually, everything is classified as yakai by human standards, be it ghosts, vile ghosts, spirits, or cursed spirits. For Naruto. The only call those of cursed spirit in nature is yakai. Why? Haha, <laughs> there is a reason for it. But let's not talk about that for now. Simply because it is rather complicated. Excuse me to dango please. Calmly, Naruto stops at the front of a small dango stand. Coming right up. In a few minutes, his order is ready, and Naruto in the end continues his walks while eating one stick of dango. The other one. Achishaku already ate the whole stick. Later. Naruto-san. Here. As Naruto walked through the red light district, he heard a voice calling on his name, stopping him in his track. And when he turns his attention to the side, he can see Kurenai is the one calling him, near her, some women around her age are watching him. Her friends probably. Though. She dropped the honorific. After all, he is pretty sure the woman called him by family name yesterday. Not like this is any matter to him though, as honorific is nothing of concern to him. And because this is not a concern to him, Naruto slowly walked toward Kurenai until, in the end, he stopped at her table. Kurenai-san. He nodded at her with a small smile, and seeing this, she smiled at him with a small patch of blush on her cheeks. Naruto-san, please take a seat. It's alright, none of my friends will bite. Despite what she said, her blush deepened a little bit more. And this time, from embarrassment, probably because she know that her words held some amount of lies. As it was rude to refuse, Naruto bow a little gracefully and took a near her. Oh ho when Nai-chan told me that she met a man, I never thought he would be a chibi like you, kid, is that why you keep refusing Asuma's advance N.O.W., you like them tiny and bite-sized. Aanko. Shit. That hurt, woman. Naruto let out a small kind smile when he sees the interaction between Kurenai and the lady with a snake scent. The woman is beautiful. With spiky purple hair tied into a high ponytail and attire like those of proper Kanoichi. Sexy, not restricting movement, and showing her figure. This woman takes her job seriously. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I assure you, Anko-san, I just reached 18 a few months ago. Hearing this, another woman, this one the brunette leaned her face forward and sniffed at him several times. My name is Hana Inuzuka and you do smell like an adult. Seeing her sniffing at him, Naruto blinked several times in confusion. But as none of the three other women seemed that surprised, Naruto in the end relented and let her. It's probably her culture or something like that. Huh, rather curious why you still look like a fresh gen in appearance, but it is okay if you don't want to tell us as for me, I am Yugao Yuzuki, nice to meet you, Naruto-san. The last woman greets him and introduces herself with a soft and kind smile. And from her expression alone, Naruto knows that among the four, she's by far probably the most normal. It's alright, as, for the reason, I was cursed. Naruto paused and let the four consider his words as a waiter walked toward him while holding a note. May I take your order sir? Saken five plates of dango. The waiter bowed a little after he heard that and walks away. All the while, the four women still had curious looks on their faces. Well, except Anko. Unlike the others, her face is somewhat grim looking. Who cursed you? The telltale of anger can be seen in Anko's eyes, though seeing this, Naruto gives the woman a reassuring smile. It seems she mistook the curse that befalls him. It's just a curse that let me control how I look don't worry, I can change into my older self, but the one who gave me the curse will pout at me if I did. It seems she is just like Kurenai-san, both like me little and bite-sized. Naruto ended his sentence with a small wink to say that he was joking about the last part in the hope the red-eyed woman won't be annoyed at him. Fortunately, she merely gave him stink eyes for his joke. That, and a rather heavy blush on cheeks. Well you're indeed cute, though, I wouldn't mind seeing how manly you're in your real body H-A-H-A-H-A. Anko's words are finished with a small laugh, followed by her three friends. Well, well, well. It seems Kurenai already told them about his ability and his connection with the creatures of the spiritual realm. Thus, they're not that surprised. And again, his abilities, he doesn't have any plan to hide them, so it's alright. 
But still, he lived for years within the protection of the Forest of Death, and most ghosts who live there never want to share their experiences with him, probably because it might remind them of their death. So, tell me about the missions you girls took. Naruto asks kindly, and maybe because of his polite tone, the four let out a small grin at him. I'll start. Hana said as she leaned her face forward. And thus, the night passed just like that as Naruto hears the tales of Kurinai and her friends. So exciting. To think the first human friends he made will be four beautiful women. Who would have thought? Later. The night becomes late as the moon slowly rises into the sky. And as the ball of rock is already atop his head, Naruto feels himself getting empowered ever slowly. That, and his red eye began to glow rather hauntingly. And once again, Naruto walks to the tall and large building that is the house of prostitution in the red light district, holding a small bag in his right hand. Excuse me, I want to meet with the madam. Yes sir, is there any problem again? If so, mm may I will be the one to send your words to the madam. Seeing the yakai in front of him trembling like a leaf in the breeze, Naruto gave her a charming smile. The smile that accepts her, not for her human form, but her everything, be it her yakai form or her human form. Acceptance. Something that is craved by all yakai in the world. And seeing this smile, the yakai in front of Naruto began to become a blushing mess. There's no problem, I'm just going to give my thanks to madam for her good work, the tea in this bag is actually my gift for her you may see it if you want. Kindly, Naruto let the yakai prostitute in front of him to see what is inside his bag. And yes, it is tea. No jinjutsu or yakai illusion whatsoever. I I see sir then I will tell the madam of your pleasant visit. Please do. Gently and regally, the woman bowed a little, then turned around and walks away, of course, Naruto easily see how she is trying to get his attention by swaying her large ass, something that a normal woman can rarely get, except by having superior genetic. And seeing this, Naruto smiled. This is why he loves yakai more than humans. They know when to return the kindness, even if said kindness is as simple as acceptance. Naruto. Don't be jealous, Hachi-chan. Isn't our love deeper than normal romance, tempered by years of us knowing each other? S-M-O-O-T-H. Ho. Po po. Right after Naruto said his piece, the deity ghost of eight feet woman start to grope all parts of his body, as usual, her eyes gleaming with crazed love. So cute, his lover is. It took the guard a mere few minutes before in the end, she is back with a calmer aura. And when she is in front of him, she gave him the most beautiful smile she can muster, a blush on her cheeks. Sir, madam is waiting for you. Thank you, and please accept this as a sign of my goodwill. Hidden under his sleeve, Naruto is holding something in his hands and gives it to the yakai in front of him, after he took her right hand. Thank you, sir, then I will accept your gift gratefully. And with that, Naruto walks in, leaving a blushing female yakai behind him. Unlike the women he met a few hours ago, the yakai didn't ask him about his height or his young appearance. After all. Yakai kill who they want to kill, and eat who and what they want to eat. And of course, they marry who they want to marry. With the madam. It was a pleasant visit. Her subordinate said. He is bringing a gift, she said, but madam is not an old yakai for nothing. Humans and their tricks. She won't be so easily fooled. Right after her subordinate left, madam turned invisible and transformed into her real form. Her long, beautiful purple kimono began to tighten as the madam gained several inches in height, and her breasts also began to get bigger. And by this point, her body would be able to charm any man that was to take a glance at her. Of course, this won't be possible, considering her invisibility. Already long, the madam's hair becomes even longer and thicker, so thick that in the end, her body is no longer seen, except for a lone, blank eye that she used to peek between the curtain of her hair. An eye that can paralyze most humans with a single glance alone. The monster. The hair monster. That is what she is, a Kejuru. Of course, against this single human, madam knows that she is not in his class. But still, fear seeing his face drenched in fear alone will be enough for her. She wants to savor the fear of someone that dares to steal her second heart. And thus, when he entered her room with a kind smile on his face, she wait. She waits. And thus she waits. Madam, you're so beautiful tonight. The compliment. Not an empty compliment to hide his fear, no. There's simply no way to hide one fear when facing against negative feelings either like Yakai. Even if he can hide it as Yakai, it would be easy for her to sense it. But no. Not fear. Hell, what she senses is a twinge of lust. Though, she doesn't need her natural ability as yakai to see the smallest patch of blush that covers the boy's face. Though he can make an expression like that too. Blink several times, madam can do nothing except nod gratefully when the boy places his gift on top of her table. He is strange. Yesterday he came and threatened her. And now, he comes back and gives her a gift just because she adjusted a few things about the red light district. 
Thi is very strange. But for some reason, she likes it. Thi is just like Yakai who is frank about their feeling. If you don't like it, beat them. If you like it, be kind to them. Thi is so unlike most humans she met in the past. They ah, thank you I do take pride in my appearance. No not really. Hejiru, after all, is a kind of yakai who hunt men by walking alone in the red light district, swaying their luscious body until a man got hooked and dare himself to grab her from behind. And when they do, the Kejiru will turn around, showing the man a face covered by mobs of hair. A haunting sight for most people. And as the man froze with fear on his face, Kejiru will grab his body using all of her hair and drain his blood using the hair that binding him. Madam herself, as an experienced Kejiru, has killed numerous humans using her hair, each time is the same. The men had an expression of horror on their faces. So no she took no pride in her appearance whatsoever. That's good, I mean, you're indeed a very beautiful woman. The boy is repeating his words with the same amount of sincerity in his voice. And hearing this, madam can do nothing except turn silent. Though, behind her, a small amount of hair is wagging happily. She likes H.I.M. This is the very first time a human called her beautiful when she is out using her true form instead of her human form. She likes. She likes. I see, once again, thank you. Please do take a seat, sir. With a small batch of her hair coming to him and gently wrapping themselves around his wrist, Madam leads him to sit on the chair across from her. And probably because the boy is someone who knows of Yakai and their culture, the boy knows that this is her act of leading him by hand like those of humans' culture, and thus, before he takes his seat, the boy gently kissed her hair in his hand and thanks. Of course madam. After he said that, he sit with a small kind smile on his face, while the hair that guided him hesitantly returned to her side. She still wants to wrap it around his wrist. Pamiyu. Please take the gift from our guest here and brew me and him a cup of tea. Yes madam. Resisting her yakai's urge to claim him as hers, madam shivered. She never had such a strong urge before, as most of her urge is a simple yakai's urge to kill humans and feast on their blood and flesh. Such a nice night we have today sir, may I know the reason for your visit? With her finger, madam tucked some of her thick mobs of hair into the back of her ear, letting the boy see her still human-like face behind the tresses of her hair. And of course, so that she can smile flirtatiously at him. She wants him to gain interest in her. Fortunately, he does, as a rather small blush can be seen on his cheeks as he returns her smile. I just would like to visit my neighbor madam. And thus, madam finds herself spending her night with him, talking and drinking the delicious tea he bought with him. Must you go back so fast, Naruto? Sadly, as the dawn slowly come, the boy decides to bid farewell. Standing in front of the entrance to her prostitution house, madam decides to escort him out. And standing across from each other, she took notice of his head that only reached up to her chest as he looked up at her. Well, not like it was that important. Yakai kill who they want to kill, eat what they want to eat, and fuck who they want to fuck. And she already decided that she want to fuck this human in front of her once they get closer. And yes, she decides to call him by name now. Yufufu, yes. I have a rather important assignment to do this morning. I see. She is upset but doesn't want him to notice this, she merely gave him another soft smile before she hides her face behind her tresses of hair once again, hiding her frown. Oh madam, before I forgot. Surprising her, Naruto suddenly grabs a few strands of his hair, the white ones. And then he cut them using his sharpened claw. W what? I really want to get to know you more, may you accept these strands of my hair madam? With a trembling hand, madam accept the strands of hair after she gulped down her saliva. This is. In Kejiru culture, is a sign of a man confessing his interest to a woman he likes. And if the Kejiru were to accept his feeling, she will tie the strands of hair given to her on her hair. Yes. It is a confession. Because once she ties them on her hair, they are basically going out. The boyfriend and girlfriend. Though, before madam can tie the hair given by Naruto on her hair, Naruto stopped her by grabbing some of her hovering hair. A smile on his face. Madam I know of your culture. But, would you please ingest my hair instead of tying them on yours? As for the reason, my white hair contains my gathered spiritual energy, so, I'm sure you'll be able to regenerate your second heart. Of course, my dear. Smile, so big then appears on Madam's face. She has already decided to tie them, which basically means she is accepting his feeling and also want to get closer. Beating them instead of tying them? Easy. And yes, she did sense the spiritual energy on his hair, and yes, just like him, she know that she would be able to regenerate her second heart. The heart that he ripped. The heart that he stole. And even now, he is stealing her heart and love with that soft smile of his. So yes, she decides to call him with a dear suffix now. Because that is what he is. A sweet dear to her heart. That's good, then please take care madam. 
but that is his last words. Naruto gave her a last smile before he turned around and walks away, leaving her who quickly brought the strands of his hair to her nose. Sneef. So full of purity. Of energy. Of L-O-V-E. And because she is in her yakai form right now, thus, humans won't be able to see her, Madam quickly put his hair in her mouth and swallow them. Thus she feels power. But Naruto. Naru hair, okay. Are you really sure about asking that woman out? Is Hachishaku's question. Yes, Hachi, I'm okay and Madam is a good yakai. I want to get closer to her. The wave of jealousy hit Naruto as the eight feet woman behind him glares at nothing. And feeling this, Naruto let out a small, amused smile. Hachishaku easily becomes jealous despite it is already a fact that he has several lovers in his life, including her. But of course, as he already going out with her for more than six years, Naruto merely said the magic words. Popa Papa Poo. Sadly, Naruto didn't expect her to be so excited. Why? Because right after he said the magic words, he stumbled, feeling a large drain on his energy reservoir. Shit. Turning around, Naruto sees it. Achishaku is glaring at him with eyes full of lust and wanton, hands creeping on him ever slowly. And then. To the human around him, Naruto suddenly disappears into the air. Spirited away. Character sheets. Name. Naruto. Age. 18 about 12 in the body, can change this at will. Height. 5 0 feet 155 centimeters. Personalities. Frank, kind but can be cold-hearted caring, always think that his bond is the most precious thing. Appearance. Just like most graduated genin, Naruto stood about 5 0 feet in height, with blonde hair, but a small patch of silver on the front. His eyes are metachromatic, with one being blue and the other one hunting red. And were one to see into his eyes, they would quickly believe that Naruto is an adult despite his body condition. He had a pale complexion, with skin like those people who are having an anemic, though strangely, were one to see him, his skin simply gave him an otherworldly charm. On the side of his cheek, three fading marks can be seen. Attire. Onikiri reforged, game, on Yoji. Abilities. As a medium, Naruto can channel spiritual energy around his body instead of chakra he can still use chakra. And with spiritual energy, he becomes more attuned with the creature of the spiritual realm, something that normal humans can't do. Basic skill is summoning lesser Shikigami. Though despite calling this ability summoning, it would be like creating to most people. This is because to most people, the form taken by the leaf came out of nowhere, well actually, Naruto merely summons forth a spark of life within everything he wants leaf, paper, drip of water, a spark of fire, etc, etc. He also can create Shikigami from lesser rank to that of advanced rank, had he had the ingredients for it. Also, trained by 1001 ghosts of the forest of death, Naruto is adept at many things. Fighting, swordsmanship, calligraphy, tea brewing, social ethics, and many other things that he sometimes forgets. Likes. Beautiful yakai, tea, his lovers, his friends, meditation, small talk, snacks, making a new friend. Dislikes. People who think white as white and black as black rude people, people who disregard other people's feelings, and priestesses only slight. Dream. To free Aoi from her seal and live a nice life with her and his other lovers, maybe also create a yakai kingdom on the way, meh, just maybe Naruto shrug. Naruto is sweeping along his shikigami when suddenly, he heard some steps walking up the stairs. And not needing to wait long, soon, a woman in kimono walked in his direction until she is right in front of him. And she is smiling. My lord, good morning. I'm here as an envoy from the madam to send this gift to you, please accept. After she took a small case from her sleeve, the woman bowed to him while holding the case in his direction. Naruto gently accepts the gift with a smile on his face. Though, his smile was slightly wry. Is this alright? I mean, I'm thankful, but this is the tenth gift I receive in these five days alone. Morning and evening, each day, the madam keeps giving him gifts with no hint to stop ever slightly. Hearing what he said, the woman in front of him widened her smile. Of course, my lord. It is because of you that the madam at last broke her bottleneck and become a high rank cursed spirit, and as a vile spirit under her, I am happy for this too. I see then please end my thanks to her. Naruto said with a kind smile. The madam has very loyal subordinates under her. And this makes him happy inside. Well, madam said you would have to send it by yourself, my lord, please excuse me. And after she said this, the woman walks away and disappears into the air. Ha. <laughs> Same response as the other nine envoys. None of them wants to send his thanks to the madam. Well, it's not like he doesn't want to go by himself. It's just that he knows the Akai, all of them, ghost and spirit and all, would need a constant focus when they are absorbing his spiritual energy. Of course, madam would be no different. She needs to focus to get everything from his hair or some of the energy will become a waste. That's why he hasn't visited for the last five days. 
Maybe later this night, she should be finished by then. Shrugging off his shoulders, Naruto continues his sweeping. Around him, the leaves Shikigami are already finished and have returned to their leaf form. Oh it finished. Let's just take a bath and go out then. Why? He wants to see ninjas. So much hate. So much regret. And so many cries of the hateful. Itachi. I will. Hush and be die. Of course, Naruto doesn't care about their problem with the living. He already got the gist from his Jiji, after all. They have died and should just go to the pure land. Fortunately, he brought some bottles of holy water with him, and thus, the vile ghost was silenced when Naruto sprayed him with a small amount of it. Jaya. Adult, child, women, women, as long they are vile ghosts, Naruto keeps spraying holy waters at them until they were no longer in this world. If they are not vile. Well, Naruto simply prayed for them. And thus, they were accepted by the door of pure land with smiles on their faces. Now, what is this for? And why so heartless to vile ghosts despite Hachishaku also considered a vile ghost? You're dead wrong. Hachishaku may be a vile ghost, but she is also considered a deity. She has her mind intact. All high-rank vile ghosts and above has their mind intact, actually. But here. In the place where a simple clan massacre happened. There is no way a high-rank vile ghost is present. There are only low-class vile ghosts, and they keep screaming at anyone that comes to their turf, which makes most normal humans shivers and in the end run away in fear. They don't have an intact mind. They are annoying. Now, what stops Naruto from sending them to pure land? None. Plus, he is also gathering their hateful essence as an ingredient to create some mid-rank shikigami. What kind of shikigami? Well, he doesn't know about it yet. But if they are female kind, then he could make them into priestesses for his shrine. What the hell are you doing? Hmm? When Naruto heard a voice from behind him, Naruto turned around to see a boy with blue attire and a headband tied to his head. And the boy is glaring at him. Sorry, must have missed you just now, vile ghost. With calmness on his face, Naruto flicks some holy water to the boy's face. What the? What the? Thus, both Naruto and the boy widen their eyes, the former because the latter doesn't scream like the other of his kinds, well the latter because he got sprayed on the face. Are you a high rank ghost perhaps? I am a human. What are you doing in the Ichiha district? Get out. Hearing this, Naruto palmed his hand with understanding eyes. Ah, I see, you must be Sasuke, some of the non-vile ghosts I prayed for just now told me about you. Ghost. Like I believe in superstition like those. The boy in blue, Sasuke snorted when he heard what Naruto said. Though Naruto himself merely let out a kind smile when he heard this. He already knows what to say. Your father said he is proud of you, he is happy that you keep training hard to show the world how the Achiha is the strongest clan. Wah. As for your mother, she said to me to tell you that you should stop eating tomatoes too much and that you need to stop brooding like an emo, find some friends to talk to and lean to. How did you? With the words of the deceased parents already sent to the sun, Naruto walked past Sasuke with a calm gait on his steps. I already purge all vile ghosts here, this place should feel a little bit serene to a human like you now. Wait. Unfortunately for Sasuke, by the time he turns around, Naruto is already no more. Gone into the air. But Sasuke. Yes. Everything is calmer now. Just yesterday, when Sasuke walked to his house and passed the Ichiha's former market district, he usually would feel angry, as if something or someone were whispering at him. But now. He feels serene. So serene that he could picture this district still full of the laughter of the children. Still full of the smiles of mothers as they are trying to haggle the prices. And still full of the boisterous laugh of men as they are drinking coffee in the morning. This is warm. Every time Sasu came to his clan district in the past, he was usually greeted by the coldness of loneliness, of hatred of the clansmen who have died. That's why he usually would go to the training ground behind his house right after he got back from the academy, though now from team training after he graduate. This feels as if all hatred in this place has been purged. But still. Who is that boy? Kakashi. As a jonin, his teacher, Kakashi should know about the boy's identity. Nodding for his plan for tomorrow, Sasuke, for once ever since the night of the Ichiha clan massacre, decided to walk to his house with calmness on each step. As the morning came and Sasuke did his usual routine, he waited for his teacher, and when the man appeared, he asked. Naruto. Yeah, he can see ghosts and communicates with them it was actually me and a few other jonins who were tasked to ask him to come out from the forest of death, and if what I heard is correct, he had lived inside the forest since he was six years old. Just as Sasuke thought. So that's why he never heard of someone with such ability in Kanoha. The boy was living in the forest of death all this time. Why did he choose to live there? Who knows? I mean, I will too if I can see what other people can't see. Humans easily freaked out by something they can't understand, you know. 
understandable. Perhaps the boy went to the forest of death to live with his friends and sharpen his ability instead of living in the Kanoha, where people keep whispering names or calling him a freak of nature. This choice is very understandable. Anyway, why did you ask, Sasuke? Nothing, I met him yesterday. He said he was purging the vile ghosts on my district and actually sprayed me with some holy water too. Of course, it would be holy water. After all, what else would an exorcist use to exorcise ghosts? The FFT, I mean, he is not wrong your breeding face is indeed like those of ghosts. Shut up. And his teacher keeps laughing. But Naruto. Hum, hum. In front of his shrine, Naruto is poking three black balls that currently letting out a rather dark miasma. Very unfortunately, yesterday he wasn't able to visit the madam because he sensed that her power was still growing, absorbing his power. Now. Probably finished, as he can only sense a rather dark but calm energy from the direction of her prostitution house. Maybe he will visit her later. Anyway. The balls. Well, they were the balls that he used to absorb the leftover negative feeling of Achiha ghosts he purged yesterday. One ball can only hold the grudge of 100 low-level vile ghosts though. This won't be enough for what he wants. Naru. Yeah, we are going out to hunt tomorrow, Hachi-chan. The key ingredient to creating Shikigami is spiritual energy, and Naruto has plenty of those in his reservoir. As for the other two ingredients. The first is hatred. Hatred is the key so that the Shikigami has a feeling to latch into. Without hatred, Shikigami will become formless and turn into low rank Shikigami instead. And second, the body itself. Now, he can use many things, a piece of cloth, an abandoned doll, or even a simple chair. But if he really wants servants that have the potential to rank up, he would need a body that has a very long and deep history. Madam's hair would be good. But the woman just finished her rank up, so asking for her hair will be very rude to her. Also, he must consider that Kijara really values their hair and only will part with a few strands if only their husband is the one that asks. He and her just go out, it's very rude to ask hair of all things to her. And that is why he said to Hachishaku that tomorrow they are going to hunt. They are going to hunt for something that has a deep and long history. P.O. Yes, Hachi-chan. It will be a date between us. Right after Naruto said that the woman's hands start to go crazy and grope him in some private place. Jeez. Hachi-chan. She's just too adorable sometimes. You are going to go out of Konoha. Hum the surprised voice of Hiruzen as Naruto visited the man when the sun started to set down. Yeah, tomorrow at most, I'll probably only need a week to gather what I want. Naruto already told Hiruzen what he want to search for, and he even told the man what he is planning with the thing he will find. Can you just look in Konoha instead? To the old man's mind, Konoha also has so many things with historical value. But hearing what the old man said, Naruto merely shook his head a few times. Unless it has existed from the time of the first Hokage, I won't bother. 100 years. If he really wants to create powerful Yakai to be his Shikigami, he needs something that is at the very least 100 years old and no less. More? More always appreciated. I, I can't think of anything that old. Pirazin said with furrowing eyebrows. Well, he can, but those things have so much historical value, and he can't just randomly give it to Naruto. That's why I'm going out. Hearing this, in the end, Hiruzen relents and starts to write something on a piece of paper. Alright, then I will create a pass for you. I'll give you one week time, if you're not back by that time, I'll have my Anbu to search for you. Sure. Naruto himself merely shrugs off his shoulders in a rather uncaring manner. He actually only needs three days to look for something that old. But, for the rest four days, he will use them to search for more ingredients. You know so that in the future, he won't have to hunt for ingredients anymore. Later. I want to visit madam. Of course sir. As Naruto is escorted to the door which leads to the room of the madam, he can see the guard is once again swaying her butt clad in beautiful kimono in a rather sexy manner that puts a small smile on his face. The treat, huh? This woman just keeps spoiling him. Madam, Naruto-sama has come to visit. Let him in. The slightly impatient voice of the madam makes Naruto blink a few times. Nonetheless, when the servant opened the door, Naruto enter. Click. And the servant closes it behind him. Jeez. Madam, I see you're as beautiful as always. Hair. Hair everywhere. Balls, ceiling, floor, everything Naruto sees is a sea of jet black hair of the madam. And on her usual seat, the madam smiles creepily at Naruto, her face has become slightly less human and more elf-like sharp ears and all, now that she has ranked up. Of course, to Naruto, the madam's smile is very beautiful. And you're as sweet as usual, my dear come, take a seat. From out of nowhere, a chair made of hair was then conjured in front of the madam's desk. And seeing this, Naruto smiled a bit and take his seat. It is soft. 
Well, of course, the chair would be soft, after all, it is made of a hair yakai's hair. But still, unconsciously, Naruto rubs his armrest, something that makes his new girlfriend smirk a little bit with a blush covering her cheeks. Madam, congratulations on your breakthrough. Thank you. Though, it would be impossible without you, dear. A soft, loving smile then appears on Madam Kijaru's face, and the hair that is becoming Naruto's chair soon extends a little bit and starts to caress his palms gently. Like a touch of a loving lover. Though, it was bad of you to not visit when I am breaking my shell. This time, the madam's voice held a tint of a joke inside. Something that made Naruto smile. You know I can't do such a thing madam. Naruto said softly after he nodded gratefully to a servant who have placed a tray of tea on the table in front of him, which she returned with a small smile before she turned around and walks away. Anyway. Interrupting a yakai when they were absorbing something is equal to stopping their evolution altogether. It is rude and simply would make most yakai angry. Well, I was thinking to grab you and force out some life essence out of you as I'm evolving, actually. Ah. Hearing what the madam said, Naruto blushed and almost spit out his tea from embarrassment. Her words to some humans would be like this. Why won't be interrupted? Because as she evolves, she will absorb his life essence. His semen is what humans would call them. Geez, madam. We are just going out, you know. By chance, Naruto already knows that his reasoning is weak at best. Because yakai fuck who they want to fuck. No matter gender, age, or the fact that they only start going out. And probably because the madam also knows that Naruto should know this single fact, the woman smiles flirtatiously. Her hair starts to extend even more and wraps itself around his body, slipping under his clothes and pants to caress the parts underneath. It was weak, dear. His reason is. And hearing this, Naruto blushed, cannot deny it. I know. As the woman in front of him started to look at him with wild eyes full of lust and drool leaking from the side of her lips, Naruto gulped. He must change the conversation. Ah uh, madam, just for your information, tomorrow, I will go out from Kanoha. I expect I will be back in about a week or less. Why? Naruto smiled amusedly inwardly seeing this. The madam has become so possessive despite they just start going out. Nonetheless, she wants an answer, and thus, Naruto starts to explain to her what he is going to search for outside the Kanoha. I see you should just use my hair. Nonsense madam, how can I ask you of your hair? Here, the boy laughed a little, though he stops laughing the moment he saw the serious eyes the madam giving him. Step. 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 Seductively, the madam stood from her seat and walked to him. Each step contains dangerous way that would make most males crazy in lust. Naruto. He blushes when the madam sits on his lap. Her breasts, clad in purple high-class silk are swaying ever softly in front of him. Thus, Naruto looks up, watching as the madam still has serious eyes, despite she is grinding his tent with her groin. The madam. Not understand, but also know that she means no harm, Naruto merely put his hands behind her waist. A rather wrong thing to do. Why? Because the moment he does, a bunch of hair comes and tied his hands in place, forcing him to keep touching the soft skin clad in silk. My dear you know what am I, right? The soft gentle voice hit Naruto as two loving palms cup him on the cheeks, caressing each cheek with her thumbs, as the madam forces his gaze to her face. All the while, Naruto can still feel that some batch of hair is starting to tie him in some places, like his legs, waist, chest, and shoulders. But this speed, it won't be long before he is fully cocooned by madam's silky hair. Yes you are a land-bound yakai. A yakai that cannot move from their position. For madam, it would be this prostitution house. If Naruto can take a guess, then he is sure that the madam is a yakai that was created from the gathering feelings of dead prostitutes, be it from overwork, abuse, or sickness. The hatred for men who saw women as toys. The wanton for power to break free from the job. And the longing for a man who would accept her for her, see her as her, and accept her whole being wholeheartedly. That is right at the very least, please create Shikigami with my hair so that I can keep watch over you the last few days, it was very torturous for me. I am so. Naruto found himself can no longer speak because the madam has already leaned down her face and kissed him on the lips, silencing him. And also, he can't run, because right after she does this, the hair behind her head extends and wraps around his head, trapping him in place. Body. Nope. Every part of his body is already fully wrapped. Alright then. If this is what happens, then what can he do except accept? Later. I will miss you. Right outside the prostitution house, Naruto is being escorted out by the madam herself in her human form. The few stairs are coming to both him and the madam. He gets stairs probably because he is a somewhat new face, and madam, because she rarely comes out from her room despite being so famous and having lines of men wanting her as their wife. But Naruto doesn't care about them. What he wants right now is to wipe the frown from his lover. 
I know, but I will make Shikigamis with your hair later this night, you will be able to inject your consciousness into them by then. I guess. She still doesn't look that happy. And Naruto can't fault her. After all, from afar, consciousness injection will only let the injector see what the Shikigami sees. It won't let them control the Shikigami's movement except for the smallest order. For example, the two faceless priestesses of Aoi that has become his attire once again. Their order from Aoi is simple. Follow. Follow Naruto, that is the only order she can give to the two. Let's just call this order slot. Aoi Shikigami only has one slot where she can put her order in when they're far away from her, and that order can be anything, as long as it is one word. One word, one slot. As for the target, it doesn't need to be put inside the slot. Say, if Aoi's order is follow, then she just needs to think about the target which, in this way, is him. She doesn't need to put the target's name in the slot. Then why he can order them around? It is because he is Aoi's partner and after she marked him, he excludes the same aura as her, so to Aoi's Shikigami, he is also their master. It is easy for him to order them based on that alone. Anyway. Sorry, I would be back in one week, I promise. You better do. If Naruto were a normal human, he would probably tremble from the amount of anger the woman in front of him excluded. That, and the phantom image of a female monster with waving hair from her back. But because he is not a normal human, Naruto merely smiled at her as loving as he can. Then, please excuse me madam. But those is his last words, Naruto turns around and walks away, leaving his lover pouting at him after he smiled at her with his stupidly charming smile. His direction. His house, of course. Character sheets. Name. Madam Kajaru. Age. 250 in appearance like a woman in their mid-20, but having wise and sadistic eyes. Height. 5'11 feet 180 centimeters. Personalities. Sadistic, cruel, and unforgiving to those she thinks of as enemies even to her subordinates. Kind, protective, and somewhat clingy to Naruto. Appearance. A tall and attractive woman that could make most males swoon even by little movement, with soft and silky hair of the color of the night that easily reach the ground, even if she were to stand up. In her human form, she has a pair of naturally seductive eyes, a small nose, and small lips tainted with rosy pink color. Her breast size in this form is E-cup. She wears no accessories whatsoever. In her yakai form, her hair becomes even longer, so long that she can wrap them around a medium building if she extends it to the very limit. Her ears also become sharp while her eyes lose their seductive light and become somewhat lazy-like, though, to normal humans with less spiritual energy than her, they will freeze in fear the moment they locked eyes with her. Her breasts also become G-cup in this form. Attire. A long piece of loose purple kimono that shows her shoulders and a small part of her top bosom, while for the bottom, the slit shows her long and beautiful leg. Abilities. As a high rank yakai, she can make any yakai with less spiritual energy under her submit by flexing her power alone. Basic skills as Kajaru consisted of moving her hair around to attack and defend. And with her spiritual energy coursing through it, she can make her hair as soft as silk, but as durable as steel, which makes it hard to cut and destroy. Her feeding, she can also use her hair to absorb the blood of anyone who was bound by her hair until there's nothing left inside the corpse, the speed of this drain is adjustable. In Kijaru's culture, their hair is their everything, and Madam also always uses it for every day's movement when she is inside her office, so much that she practically never uses her hands to do anything inside her office. This makes her very adept and very used to moving her hair, one of her strengths that can also be classified as a weakness, because the moment she loses access to her hair, she's literally a sitting duck. Likes. Naruto, money, polite people, tea time. Dislikes. Humans, rude humans, ninja humans, worthless humans, and when Naruto doesn't visit her for more than two days. Dream. 1. To be the most successful madam of prostitution. 2. To marry Naruto and live with him, uncaring of her land-bound status. Green scenery, fresh air, and the sounds of nature. Ah, so and I see. H-U-M, H-U-M. As Naruto walks down the road, he let out small, haunting hums from his lips. If someone heard his hums without seeing him, they probably will start to run away after they thought the sound is a ghost's voice. That's how haunting his voice is. And again, there is a small amount of spiritual energy in his voice. So, most humans would shiver if they hear his hums. Though, oppositely, Hachishaku that hovering behind him really enjoying his beautiful voice. And that's why he never thinks much about what the other humans thought when he hums. As long those precious to him enjoying his hums, Naruto will do it. It simply is that. Hachi-chan, you sense anything? Nua. As the ghost behind him shook her head a few times, Naruto let out some more hums that she enjoys, his eyes looking to left and right to search for any spikes of spiritual energy. Unlike humans, except for some race of yakai, none of them can hide their spiritual energy. 
Hell, even yakai of high rank and above aren't able to lower their energy just like that, except by using some kind of talisman made by Onyuji. Ah, talk about Onyuji. I wonder is Sensei healthy now? Naruto let his mind wander as he thinks about the regal and powerful man that taught him for several years. Where did the man say he live again? Hachi-chan, do you remember where Sensei live? Drrrr. Here, Naruto let out a small amused laugh when instead of answering him, Hachishaku chose to growl at him. Oh, right. How can he forget Hachishaku's hatred toward his sensei? Then again, considering her first meeting with his sensei, Naruto is not that surprised. She almost got herself sealed away, after all. Ha ha, sorry, sorry, let's just continue to search for some ingredient, Hachi-chan. The O. And thus, Naruto continues his journey to search for the ingredient to create his Shikigami. Well he could call them servants, but it would be incorrect because Hachishaku is also his Shikigami, and yet, instead of a servant, she is his lover. Oh, his sensei talk about this too, didn't he? There are two types of Shikigami. One is that of a servant, which is created by Onyoji and must abide by the master's rule, and will die the moment the master cut the connection. Well the other one is that of contract. Simply said, it is not servitude and is more like a mutual friendship between an Onyoji and a Yakai. The sensei is bad at explanation I forgot most of his teaching. Naruto said, shrugging off his shoulders. The man is powerful. So powerful that even deities are afraid to get on his bad side. But nonetheless, he is a bad teacher. Plus, he won't be all-powerful for that long. Why? Because one of Naruto's bucket lists is to defeat the man. Whether it is about spiritual energy's density, knowledge, shikigami amount, and overall power altogether. Someday, he will defeat his sensei. I sense spiritual energy. Meteo. A little bit too low, nonetheless, Naruto decides to turn a little bit to left and walks toward the direction of the spiritual energy he senses. Probably a yakai, from the fact the energy alone is rather dense and powerful. But this direction. Thinking for seconds while tapping his chin, Naruto in the end shrugged his shoulders. He is pretty sure there's no village or something like that in this direction from the map he saw back in the village. And yes, the first thing he did before he start this journey of his was to remember the whole map of Fire Nation, knowing it would help. H-U-M. And thus, Naruto continues his hum as he walks. Later. Ah is this shrine invisible too? Naruto said as he wryly smiled at the rundown shrine in front of him. To his eyes, it is haunting, but at the same time, very real. He doesn't have any human eyes to see whether this thing could be seen or not by most humans, thank you very much. Touch. Why don't you just try to touch it? That is what Hachishaku suggested to him. But hearing this, Naruto's smile becomes even wryer. He also can touch the shrine where Aoi is currently being sealed, after all. Now, the true question is, should he enter? Shrine means God. God means powerful. And powerful means he can be beaten up by any of them if he is not careful enough. Beaten up means pain. And Naruto doesn't like pain. Scratching his head for a few minutes, Naruto in the end chose to turn around and not do anything. Gods love their rest. He should be able to get away now if he were careful. He is already lucky enough that Aoi was kind enough to let him enter her shrine. Not all deities like that though. So, he better turn around Rai. Ah this is stupid. Barrier. The sun itself suddenly disappears the moment a large bloody red moon hovers right above his head. And inside this barrier, the scenery itself changes. The shrine becomes much larger, towering even the tallest tree around it. And right now, the shrine is being covered by a large cracking doom. Why cracking? It is simply because seven or so yakai are currently hitting the barrier, and each of them is sporting a large evil grin on their face. Oni. Naruto's mind concluded, seeing their lone horn atop their head. Should he help her run? Despite thinking like this, Naruto's left waist burned with a crimson fire as a long, sheathed katana appears, humming with an unknown power. Boy, boy what are you guys doing? Calmly, Naruto walked to the group of Oni, getting their full attention almost instantly. And their eyes don't look that friendly. Seeing this, Naruto let his right hand grabs the sword's handle on his right waist. Egan, human. Before I decide to make a feast out of you. The largest between seven Ana said, his face leaning down toward Naruto with a mocking grin on his face. Unimpressed, Naruto let out his evil grin. Destruction. Death. Anger. It was just for a small second, but for that small second, the seven Anas felt as if they were dying several times in the hands of the human across from them. And this makes them tremble in fear. Tell me, before I decide to make a mince meats of you, trash. Naruto said with a kind smile and a kind tone in his voice. And seeing such contradiction, the seven Anas get even more scared. 
Even so, they still decide to keep silent and hold their clubs, intent to destroy the human in front of them before he can start his attack. And seeing this, Naruto's smile widened. Servant Shikigami. He won't get any information out of them. Click. With his thumb, Naruto unsheathed his lone katana. Shadow slashes Rajiman. After he said that. Click. He sheathed back his sword and started his walk toward the seven unmoving Anis. First slash, the hand of the frontmost Oni got cut off cleanly. The second slash, said Oni's head is no longer on his shoulders. In the third slash, he split into two perfectly in the middle. In the fourth slash, he and his six friends got their upper bodies and bottom split, and as this happens, a large purple eye can be seen closing above the group. And the fifth slash, the eye above them opened. And their bodies quickly become very tiny pieces from so many slashes that happened. At the same time, on the ground, seven claw-like marks can be seen, destroying the ground and burning any remaining corpses with a terrifying purple flame. Of course, unfortunately for Naruto, the final slash was so big that the claw-like marks and their fires reached the barrier of the shrine, destroying it almost instantly. Ouch. Already reaching where the Oni standing just a few seconds ago, Naruto flinched a bit. Though, he let out a small sigh of relief when the claw-like marks and their fire doesn't reach the shrine itself. Jeez. And here he thought he had more control over his sword techniques. Let's just hope the deity inside doesn't notice his presence. Thinking like this, Naruto let out a small nod and turn around. As long the deity hasn't noticed his presence, he should be able to get out of this small domain. He doesn't want to face a deity, no, no. But. In the future, perhaps. Inside the shrine. I see so you found a new master to serve, Anakiri. In a single large room made of beautifully carved woods, a lone woman opened her eyes. All the while, her hands are caressing the inhumanly large sword on her lap. Anakiri. The blade that cut all yakai indiscriminately. To think a young human of all things to get his hands on such a sword. Just what are you thinking Abe no Seimei? She can't understand. Seimei has promised every leader of yakai that he would not give the sword to anyone unworthy. Hell, he even promised to Anakiri itself. But. Rajiman. The boy was able to use one of the abilities of Anakiri, which means even Anakiri itself thinks that the boy is worthy to hold it. Curious, the woman in the end nodded to herself and walks out of her shrine. At the same time, the large sword in her hands disappears into the crimson fires. She's going to ask Seimei just what is so special about the boy. After all, she is bored after several years of sitting in one place. With Naruto. Ah, so annoying. Walking on a street once again, Naruto let his mind wander as he plays with a single horn that he's able to take from the dead Oni before the creature dies. He has wasted several hours of his time. And yet, he only gets a single horn of Oni of all things. Oni. Well they're not the weakest per se. But they're indeed the dumbest among most yakai. After all, very few yakai could defeat Oni when it comes to stupidities. Again, he repeats. So annoying. Sigh. Thus far, the journey doesn't look good. What do you think, Hachi? Me is H-A-P-P-Y. As long I'm with you, I'm happy. And hearing this, Naruto's lips turn upward a little bit. So cute, his girlfriend is. But knowing that they have no time to let the time pass just like that, Naruto fastens his steps. He must gather as many Shikigami as possible. And also knowing the reason for his drive, Hachishaku merely latches on her arms on his shoulders as usual. Another spiritual energy was detected, Naruto perk up his head a little bit and turn his attention to his right. No not spiritual energy. Hatred. A strong one too at that. With. There has been a repeated mysterious death near the Yu village, from the report, they all dies in the river. That is what she heard from one of the generals when he was talking with another general. They were taking a break time and eating some anidurus. But no. That's not what she cares about. Mysterious death. That's what she heard from the man. And Yu village also wasn't that far from the capital. So why there's no help being sent to the place by her follower Daimyo? No, optimistically thinking, the Daimyo should have already sent his men to the river to investigate, only to find nothing. The Akai, then. She concluded. And thus, she, Akita Soji, the daughter of the fire Daimyo, decided to take arms and went to the village. Pant. Pant. Your persistence, I'll give you that, Yakai. Panting, Akita held her sword even tighter and poised it at the female yakai before her. The woman is beautiful, most yakai do, now that she thinks again, with charming emerald eyes and long, black tresses of hair behind her. As for her attire, it was simply a simple white kimono that most females wore after taking baths. The most visible truth, however, is that the woman is wet from head to toe, showing a generous amount of curves and skin from this wetness. As for status. Well, the yakai is on her last legs, basically speaking. 
Despite this, the glares of hate are still burning heatedly inside those emerald eyes. Not that she cares, in the first place. Then thinking like this, Akita shorten their distance, eyes ablaze with cold, just fury for the people killed by the Yakai in front of her. Die. Plank. However, her eyes widen when instead of flesh, her blade meets with another blade. And behind said blade, a pair of heterochromatic eyes of blue and red dances with pure amusement. Now, now, I don't think raising blade against a beauty is a good ethics now, right? She's a yakai. Akita hissed hatefully against the boy in front of her. He must be a normal human if he can only see the beautiful human woman form of the yakai grinning behind him, probably happy that she got a dumb human to fall for her human form. After all, as on Yoji, she can easily see behind that illusion. A being of nightmarish apparition made of so many female human fleshes put together forcefully. The exact appearance. Akita doesn't want to see into it too much, honestly. Now that's rude. Akita widened her eyes when she folded and thrown several meters away from the kick sent at her. Grabbing a hold of her pained stomach, she can only glare at the boy, not missing the mocking grin the yakai behind him sent at her. I mean, yeah, most people would be afraid to see her true form. But it still doesn't give you the right to be racist here. After he said that, the boy waved his sword and let out some amount of spiritual energy from the tip of the blade. Not enough to cause any damage except to ruffle some grass, but enough to make Akita look hopeful and made the yakai behind him change her mocking grin into a frown of dread. She's not just bad in appearance, she also have killed several humans that comes to the river. We should just kill her and be done with it, oh on Yuji. He is skillful enough to only let out small spiritual energy from the tips of his sword. One that has such fine control must be an Anyuji, unlike her that merely use her spiritual energy to let her cut human and yakai alike. Ah, that's change a few bit of things. Akita let out a small sigh of relief when the boy spun his blade skillfully and let it rest inside its sheath. The sheath looks familiar. But ignoring all of this, as she doesn't have time to think about it, Akita nodded and walked to the yakai, intending to kill her before she can recover more of her strength to run away. And perhaps seeing this, this yakai began to get teary eyes and backed away wait a bit now. Again, the boy walked to her line of sight while giving the yakai his back. A sign of protection. And also a sign of trust. Seeing this, Akita grit her teeth in frustration. What now? Tell me please, why did you do it? The boy ignored her and decided to turn around to give that question to the yakai. And while she doesn't really know what is the face he is making right now, she could tell that from his tone alone, he must have a kind looking smile on his face. He's trying to understand the yakai. The yakai that have killed so many people just because they come to the river. Now, if she can be honest, this would be a good time to simply dash and cut the yakai now and there. After all, with the boy giving her his back, there's no way he could protect the vicious yakai like before. But. For the life of it, Akita's instincts are screaming at her that if she were to get close, she will die. Will die. The boy he is dangerous. I I those humans keep dirtying my river. At first, I merely spooked them out by showing them my true form, but they kept coming so, I had to kill them I'm as sorry, please don't kill me. The Yakai. She is crying. And from her standing place, Akita could see the emotions passing through the Yakai's eyes. Happiness. Nervousness. Desperation to be believed by them. No. Not by them. By him. Just what kind of face he is making that the man killing Yakai literally begging to be believed. A ruthless one. No from the happiness in the yakai's eyes, Akita believes it must be a face full of kindness of acceptance. Alright, I trust you and ma'am, you heard the woman, please go back to the capital, as for her, I'll make her my shikigami, she will no longer kill humans from now on. The second sentence is pointed at her. And from the fact the boy knows of her allegiance with the capital, he must know her identity. The sole daughter of the fire daimyo. I do not accept, no matter what she said, she still have killed several humans just because they have dirtied her wa. Don't you dare use, just because now ma'am. Why don't I go to capital and dump a whole house of trash on top of your white daimyo building? You have no right to value someone's property just because it has no value to you. That shudder. And again, she can see where he's coming from. After all, were someone dared to do what he said, anyone that watched would have the culprit's head almost immediately. If they are using this fact as a reference, the yakai who spooks humans at first before she goes for kills, would look kind compared to the militant the daimyo has. But. There's no but. However, if you still want to clash your belief with me, I shall comply though, don't fault me if you somehow die in a second. He doesn't touch the hilt of his sheathed sword, no. But by the end of him finishing his words, Akita feels it, and she is sure that the yakai behind the boy could feel it too. The pressure of deity. Po P.O. Paul, a ghost of a woman in white appears behind the boy, her long arms resting on his two shoulders. Face. 
Under the large wide white hat, the woman has no face like that of a human. Both of her eye sockets and mouth are opening, showing nothing but the dark abyss hidden inside the three holes. And it is rightfully frightening for Akita that immediately becomes sweaty and panting from the pressure of the aura and the horrifying sight. You're giving a bad first impression, Hachishaku. And just like that, the pressure and the horrifying face are gone, as if never there in the first place. Now, instead of a face of nightmare inducing, the woman has the face of a loving lover, with beautiful eyes and supply lips that currently pouting at the boy several feet shorter than her. Gulp. She is scared. Her, Akita Soji, the sole daughter of the fire daimyo, is scared as hell, more so after he heard the name said by the boy. Hachishaku. The guardian deity that's revered by some people of rural villages. Why is she giving her full protection to this boy, Akita doesn't know. And honestly, she doesn't want to find out, not when the ghostly deity is currently giving her the most stink glare she could do without making her face horrifying. Alright it seems you're pretty capable, Anyoji. Then I shall put the Akai in your care. However, if I ever heard of her killing another innocent, I will cut her where she stand. Yuhahaha. <laughs> I understand ma'am. If she indeed dares to create another problem, do please call me. Anyway, my name is Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki, the student of Abe no Seimei, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Akita took notice of his lack of agreement with her killing his newly gained Shikigami and put it in the back of her mind. But, Abe no Seimei, huh? She never heard of any rumor or fact of the legendary Anmoji having a student. Hell, from what she knows, the man doesn't even have one apprentice. It's pleasure to meet you too, Naruto-san. I am Akita Soji, the sole daughter of Ryuji Soji, the fire daimyo and one of the generals of the capital. And thus, the day she meets with the strange, yet kind Anmoji. Later. As Naruto walks through the street to another village, he hums happily. Behind him, his new Shikigami stares at his back with confusion plastering on her beautiful face. And of course, she is still soaking wet from the head to her feet. That's just what she is, so Naruto won't try to make her change her clothes. Hey, wait. Turning around, Naruto let a kind smile on his face appear as he want to ask the woman something a little bit private. Not to be rude or something, but how many attire do you have? I like what I am wearing right now. About ten if I can remember right, master. Ah, don't need to call me master or something like that, just call me Naruto, okay why? She looks somewhat confident and even gains a small blush of happiness after Naruto said this, and seeing this, Naruto let out his own smile get even wider. His new Shikigami is happy, that makes him happy. For all intent, Naruto is a simple guy. And thus, Naruto told the woman the reason for him exploring the Fire Nation outside his village, the Great Kanoha. Her face was neutral when he said Kanoha, thus, Naruto deducts that he won't need to have some headache when he brings her there a week from now on. That's good. So, you want my wet kimonos to create some mid-rank shikigami. The kimono themselves won't have any spiritual energy, being of normal clothes and all, but if they were saturated with the natural sticky water that comes out of her body for half a day, they will have enough spiritual energy to be an ingredient. Yes. Of course, I won't ask for free, when we reach Kanoha, I'll ask whether Madame Kejiru whether she has some nice kimonos around your size. Hey alright, then I don't mind, Naruto-kun. Ah. Suffix already? Oh well, he doesn't mind about such a thing. If nothing else, he is happy that she accepted him as a partner, despite she just knew him today. With. She hates them. Humans. Living beings. Or whatever beings that could breathe and smiles while she is rotting and decaying under this river. And again, she is made by clumps of the hatred of the women that died because of the river's stream. So of course she would hate the breathing, beautiful beings while she is rotting, ugly and deformed, alone and unloved under the water. But still. She knows that she is a yakai and can't hurt humans too much if she wants to keep on living. Anyoji. The bane of all yakai. The people who can end her life with ease. And thus, she decided to resist any urge to attack humans and keeps her happiness by taking a bath every single minute, hour, and day. As a woman, and as a water-based yakai, taking a bath is one of the joys of her life. Yet. Despite her best attempt to ignore humans. They keep coming to the river, dumping their trash all over it and basically at her face. She hates them. And each day made her hate even stronger. On Yoji. She still remembers the damned humans. And fearing those people, she chose to chase off any humans that dare to come to her river. But humans are vicious. Not being able to dump their trash in the river, they choose to dump it on the nearby ground. And when the rain appeared, the piled up trashes would arrive on the river within minutes. It angers her. It angers her so much. From the harmless spooking, she decides to kill them one by one, no matter what was their intention to come to the river, she chose to kill the humans all the same. 
she used illusion to lure humans with an illusion of a woman taking a bath, and men came near to assault her, while women came to berate her. She dragged them under and ate them all the same. Though of course, instead of eight, she actually merged the bodies of the dead women into her own, so that she can be more beautiful. And in no time, humans had become a simple nutrient to her. Stronger and stronger. Each time she killed a human, her essence become even stronger, and from a simple water yakai, she gained a new ability, flesh manipulation. She can defeat on Myoji with this ability. Or at least, that's what she thought. Pride broken and body tired, she can't do anything except glare at her enemy, daring her to do the final strike at her. It may take hundreds of years, but when the hatred in the air is enough for her resurrection, she will have her revenge. She will kill all humans until there's Noth. Plank. Now, now, I don't think raising blade against a beauty is a good ethics now, right? May I talk with Abe no same? There are some important matters that I would like to discuss with him. Even as the only daughter of the fire daimyo, Akita Soji knows that she must be careful not to offend the man called Abe no Seimei, and thus, here she is, standing in front of the large Tori gate that acts as the entrance of the huge mansion where the strongest Anyoji lives with his Shikigami. Now, who is she talking to? As she doesn't have an adequate amount of spiritual energy, she isn't able to see the form of the creature guarding the gate nonetheless, she asked the creature whether she can enter or not. Knowing she can't just barge in. When it comes to Anyoji, if you aren't able to see the Yakai's true form, then that means you're far below it, be it in strength or experience. Wait here. Her whole heart trembles when she heard the creature's voice. But hardening her face to show nothing outwardly, Akita simply waits as the creature flies off toward the large mansion behind the gate. No, instead of the mansion it went to the Sakura tree behind the said mansion. And knowing it meant she has come when the lord of the house is having his tea time, Akita nodded to herself. So fortunate. Master Seimei. Softly, Akita Soji sat across the legendary man and sees a position and bowed a little as a sign of respect. And when she raises her head, she can see that the man across from her has already stopped staring into the space and focused his gaze on her with a kind smile on his lips. The strongest on Yoji, Abe no Seimei is a man who looks about mid-thirty in appearance, but actually already lived for more than a hundred years. Blue kimono adorn his deceptively lean body, with markings of white birds on each sleeve. His hair, silverish white, drapes on his shoulder gently, something that makes him look like a woman at first sight. Actually, even Akita got herself fooled once the very first time she met the man. Akita Soji, a pleasure to meet you once again. Kahaku said there is something important you need to tell me. Yes I met a boy that called himself your student, his name is Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. Here, the man across from her hummed a little. The beautiful hum that makes every piece of leaf on the tree starts to tremble along with his voice. Even her body also shivered from the insane amount of spiritual energy the man released with a hum alone. I see, I never thought he would come out of the forest of death this soon, but, good for him. Forest of death sir? Isn't that? Akita said while trying to calm her beating heart after she heard the man's hunting humming. Yes, that's the shrine where Kankandara is sealed, and Naruto lived in harmony with Kankandara and Hachishaku for years there. Hearing the two names of the vilest deity ever lived, Akita resist her urge to shiver in fear. Kankandara slew more than a thousand holy men and women, and Hachishaku killed thousands of innocent people. Honestly, she doesn't know which one is worse between the two. But. How is that possible? It was then that Akita saw it. The smallest smile of pride that Abe Noseme had for a small second. Naruto he is special, so special that Anakiri accepted him as his master the moment Naruto touched his hilt. Anakiri. The sword-shaped yakai that fought with Abe no Seimei on his many journeys, defeating legendary yakai and deities alike. That Anakiri. So that's why his sword seems familiar. Though, I didn't sense anything from Anakiri. She muttered a little to herself, though her eyebrows furrowed in confusion. Taking notice of her expression and did hear what she said just now, Abe no Seimei took out his fan and cover his amused smile with it. It's probably an illusion. Naruto rarely takes out real Anakiri and mostly uses any branch he could find to fight someone. BBB branch. As in, tree branch. Akita can't help but raise the tone of her words the moment she heard what the legendary Anyoji said. Then said Anyoji merely waved his fan amusedly the moment he heard her shock. Though of course, he also raises one of his eyebrows, curious. Did you fight him? I thought you and him met and fought some vile yakai together. Yes, I guess it will be better if I tell you the whole story, Master Seimei. And thus, Akita sits there for hours, telling the legendary man about what truly happened between her and his student. Hidden from her sight, Abe no Seimei's smile of pride only gets bigger and bigger. With Naruto. Thank you for letting me stay for the past few days, Monk Chiriku. Naruto said as he gave the bald man across from him a small bow of gratefulness which was returned by said man. 
though, the man himself had a wry smile on his face as he feels strange pressures coming out from the smiling boy in front of him. No not him. The invisible Shikigami behind him. Though if Shiriku can be honest with himself, he doesn't know where his fault lay for the past few days. Oh well. May the Buddha bless you on your journey back home, Naruto-sama. Of course, may the Buddha bless you too, Chiriku. After he exchanged his pleasantries with the chief monk, Naruto turned around and walks in the direction of Konoha. It's time to go home. I don't like him, N-A-R-U-U. Ahaha, that's what you always say when it comes to holy men and women, Hachi. A few hours after they start their journey back home, Hachishaku suddenly said that to him with a pout on her adorable, yet mature face. Naruto's answer? Still as calm as the last few days. And yes, Hachishaku was already like this for the last few days, trying her best to act upset so that he would let her do the deed. What deed? She wants to kill Chiriku and everyone under him in cold blood. And knowing this, Naruto never let his heart have any taint of negativity for the last few days, as he knows his darkness could make Hachishaku even more vile than she already is. And when she does. Well, forget Chiriku and his underlings. Everyone that lives a few miles from the man's location would probably die along because of Hachishaku's rampage. That's how dangerous she is if left unchecked. Hachi, would you mind carrying me? Naruto said and turned around, his arm spreading while looking up at his giant lover with a soft smile on his lips. Her answer? Oh. I refuse. She said while throwing her face away from him, hands folded under her large perking breasts. Seeing this, Naruto smiled wryly. She is sulking. Hachishaku, a deity worshipped by so many villages for hundreds of years is sulking. So cute. If I'm back to my six years old self, would you? She doesn't answer him. But he can easily take notice of her eyes that flickered at him for a small second in interest. Ha. <laughs> if there is something Naruto knows for sure about Hachishaku, then it would be the fact that her lust would increase the younger he becomes and decrease the older he became. Hell, she stared at him with disgust the moment he used his 18 years old body. Yakai. They like what they like and hate what they hate. That's why Naruto let his body stuck in his 12 years old body, after all. Plus, around 5-0 in feet, he is actually as tall as most 14 years old kids back in Konoha. Even that Ichiha he met a week or so ago was shorter than him by a few margins. Yes he hit his growth spurt rather early, fortunately. His 18 years old body. Ha. He is so tall that even his sensei would do a double take if he was able to see such a sight. Yes, he is that tall. Well, I guess you don't want to then. Just right after Naruto turns around to continue his walk, his feet are suddenly rooted to the ground, from his back, Hachishaku knelt and wraps her arms around his waist, her red face resting on his shoulder, panting with lust. An A-R-U-U-U-U. Annoyance and a slight begging tone can be heard by his ears, and hearing this, the boy smiles a little bit and turned his face to the right, kissing the soft cheek of his girlfriend for a few seconds, all the while, his right hand reaches into her other cheek and began to caress said part lovingly. Popo Pio. Loving the attention given to her, Hachishaku began to mutter happily. Her cheeks become so red that it would be dangerous if she were a human, while her hands began to grope every part of his body that she can grope. Which literally everything, mind you. Promise me you won't kill Chiriku and his underling. He needs to have her words first. After all, among Hachishaku's abilities, her main ability is very dangerous. Teleportation. She can teleport to anyone she wants, as long she already saw them once. It's dangerous because if he doesn't have her words, she could massacre the monks within a few seconds he isn't looking, then teleport back to his side. Must I? Outing. Right after she heard his words, Hachishaku turned her face to the left, facing him with an adorable pout that once was a forbidden technique that was able to fold Naruto like dry paper. Now. Naruto simply continues his caress, and the lips that just now kissed her cheek are now pecking on her lips and nose, something that broke her pout and change into one evil-looking but happy grin. Of course, my dear, beautiful, Hachishaku-sama. S-M-O-O-C-H. Naruto said deep into her mouth while kissing her, something that made her eyes flutter madly in happiness while returning his kiss. Okay, then P-O-I-P-R-O-M-I-S-E. Hearing this, Naruto let out a smile and turned his body to the body that he had back when he is six years old. Shrinking, again and again, he then reaches his six years old height which is only three three feet, with big, baby blue eyes staring at Hachishaku that got her breath ragging almost instantly the moment she saw him. Fortunately, his clothes shrink along with him. An A-R-U-U-U, so C-U-T. And thus, Naruto found his now short body buried deep inside the woman's cleavage as she snuggles on him like a rabid beast in heat. Oh well. A few hours of snuggles time should be alright. But the Kita. I see I understand your fear now. But just let him be. 
if Naruto indeed spared that yakai, he must have seen something which you didn't in that way, when it comes to seeing the true nature of yakai, he has more experience than you, I shall trust his judgment. Akita Soji, the sole daughter of the fire daimyo grit her teeth inwardly as the greatest onyoji that ever lived, waved away the word she said, and simply said that for a response. Trust. He is trusting his student that much. Isn't this just a bias? But, Master Seimei your student, he is still young, isn't he? Akita then saw at the smallest raise of an eyebrow, a sign of amusement and curiosity for a small second dance on the face of Abe no Seimei. Though it has gone as fast as it came. Hmm. Of that you're very wrong. I believe he is about your age right now. Naruto can change his body proportion and usually stay in his 12 years old body. That shocked her. I see. The boy she saw back then actually comes from the same age group as her. No wonder he held such wisdom within his eyes. He must have a lot of experience as a human and as a medium. Unlike her that have wasted so many years inside the castle playing around. Akita. As the Onyoji in front of her called her name, Akita broke away from her thoughts, her eyes focused back on the Onyoji clad in blue. Of course, her face blushes. Embarrassed that she was caught losing control of her thought. As a samurai, daydreaming is not something that is allowed to happen, as samurai need to always have full control of their body and mind. It's different from meditation in that meditation means sharpening one's mind, while losing in thought thoughtlessly means wasting one's time. How good is your swordsmanship now? Fortunately for her, the great Onyoji didn't call on her fault and simply continues with his words. But her swordsmanship. Why would he suddenly gain interest in her skill in swordsmanship? As it was not really a secret in the first place, Akita gave the man a small bow of respect. I'm pretty proud of my current strength, Master Seimei. I was able to fight on par with the other generals of the Fire Daimyo's army. Her father's army, but the man already knows about her origin, so she doesn't need to say anything about it. I see that that's good in the next Chuanin exam, you should go with your father to Konoha, pit your swordsmanship skill with Naruto and learn you won't regret it. As the man said something rather cryptic in nature, Akita inwardly raised one of her eyebrows in confusion. Isn't the man totally losing himself in his trust to this Naruto fellow? But nah. It's impossible. Abe no Seimei has lived for years and he never took any apprentice under him and even vehemently refused anyone that asked him to be their teacher. So this Naruto must be very special. This young one understand, then until the day happens, I shall sharpen my blade. Clapping one of her fists against her palm, Akita gave the man a deep respectful bow. She is grateful to be given this meeting with the strongest Onyoji. And after she gave her pleasantries, Akita walks out of the mansion, leaving one Abe no Seimei that currently humming in thought. With Naruto. Right after he was a few hundred meters away from the Konoha, Naruto jumped off Hachishaku's shoulder and let his spiritual energy wash over his body, returning his body to that of 12 years old in height. He doesn't want any unnecessary questions to be thrown, after all. Po. Disappointed, but still knowing why he jumped off, Hachishaku merely muttered sadly for a small second. She already got about half a day time to carry him, so, despite being disappointed, she's still happy enough to let her boyfriend go away from her embrace for now. Let's go, Hachi. Doesn't know what was going on inside the mind of the vile ghost deity, Naruto turned his head to the side and gave her a small smile for a small second. And seeing his smile, Hachishaku happily hovered to his back and placed her hands on his shoulders like always, caressing his shoulders and neck with a touch of a loving lover, one that made Naruto smile happily as he walks to the Konoha. Halt, please. Name and reason for coming to Konoha. As the guard stopped him, Naruto blinked a few times. Ah. The guard guarding Konoha's gate today isn't the one that saw him go out from the village six days ago. Naruto Yuzumaki, and I'm a civilian in Konoha. Alright, let me check on my book for a bit. As the guard checked on the rather thick book on his table, Naruto waited calmly until a few minutes later, the guard come back with a kind smile on his face. Alright Naruto-san, you may enter. The blonde in question nodded after hearing this and walks to the village. His direction. The Hokage's office. After all, his Jiji requested him for an immediate report the moment he come back to the village. Honestly, he doesn't want to do this, considering if he wants to go to the Hokage's office, he must walk on the street where normal civilians usually hang around. But, as the sun is already going down, it should be fine, considering most people except ninjas would be at home at this time of the day. Later. H-U-M. Naruto-san, you may enter. It took him a few minutes of waiting before in the end, he can enter the office of Konoha's leader. Behind him, Hachishaku is growling at the woman that was calling on his name just now, being jealous for no reason. Then again, she hates all humans except him. So, except for some humans like Chiji for example, she rarely let any of them touch him or even something as simple as calling on his name. 
Thank you. After Naruto gave the woman a small word of gratitude, he opened the door to Hiruzen's office, happy to see the man look somewhat fresher than a week ago. Why? He doesn't know. But it doesn't mean he can't ask. Wow Gigi, you look fresh today, did something good happen? Ahaha, my boy. I'm just happy that today's work wasn't as demanding as normal days, that's all. Heh. <laughs> Such a simple reason to be happy. Oh well. Naruto Uzumaki, reporting that I'm now back to the village. That's good, that's good, I'm happy that you're back before one week passed. Is there any particular reason? After the old man said this, he start to move one of his eyebrows in a rather suggestive manner. And this confused Naruto greatly. Though, now that he thinks again. Rumors about his relationship with Kurenai and her group must have been circulating when he was away. The old man across from him in question probably heard about it and currently teasing him for it. And this put a small smile on Naruto's lips. He has no reason to get personal and create a romantic relationship with humans, knowing his lineage as Yuzumaki and usage of spiritual energy will make him live longer than any human can ever hope. Hell, even his teacher, Aid no Seimei is still in his prime, despite already being more than old by most human standards. Ahaha, whatever you think about, Jiji. I believe it isn't true. Is that so? As the old man across from him deflated from his lack of embarrassment, Naruto continued his laugh for a few more seconds. Ha! Gigi, you should have known that he is 18 despite looking like a 12 years old genin. Any kind of embarrassing tease won't work on him. Not anymore. And thus, Naruto and Hiruzen continue their night by talking with each other with a few glasses of sake. What? He is old enough to drink. As late night arrives, Naruto reaches his shrine and walks to the warm embrace of his bathroom. He better clean himself before he goes to bed. However, just as he going to start to wash his body from the nearest body of water, a spike of spiritual energy can be felt as a disgusting amount of disfigured fleshes appears, fusing and molding ever slowly into the beautiful form of his newest Shikigami, the woman he saved from Akita Soji. Meijo Meijo Shinrin is the name he decided for her, considering she was called the Witch of the Forest by the people she terrorized. Meijo, it's nice to see you again. Likewise, Naruto-kun I'm sorry to appear at such a time. The woman quickly sat the moment her body fully reformed, being nude, all the while, her face is a blushing mess. Has so funny and adorable, she is. Nonetheless, despite her presence, Naruto continues to take his bath, washing his body before he can join Meijo in the body of water. Now, you're probably asking just where he is taking a bath. It is actually the small pond that is connected to the river of the forest of death that he told his Shikigami to make a week ago. Yes this is his bathroom. After all, the shrine itself doesn't have any bathroom, so he must make do with what he has at the moment. When he had more money, it was then he could start to renovate the shrine, so it may have a bathroom. It's alright and sorry to force you to hide all of your energy. It was a few days ago. As Naruto decided to stay for a few days in the dwelling of fire monks, one of the students took notice of Meijo's energy and start to pray sutra. It was able to hurt her. And acting quick, Naruto used his energy to forcefully activate Meijo's power, flesh manipulation, so that she can be as small as possible, and placed her inside an invisible and thick barrier. It's alright, Naruto-kun, and you did it to protect me, so I'm grateful for your help. I'm glad to hear that. After Naruto said this, he takes his seat beside the flesh yakai, submerging almost all of his body inside the pond, both arms behind his head as he lay it down, so that he can stare at the beautiful moon in the sky. And as he doing this, the flesh yakai beside him shyly places her head on his small chest and starts to nuzzle it with a reddening face. Feeling this, Naruto smiles a little bit and places one of his palms on top of her head, caressing the soft and naturally wet hair of Meijo. P-O-O-O-O-O. The ha ha, yes, yes. I let you take some of my energy, Hachi, don't be jealous now. As Naruto let his energy be drained by Hachishaku, the vile deity thus slowly materialized beside him and quickly placed him on her lap, trapping half of his body inside her giant pair of breasts, while her hands began to start their routine to grope his body. Of course, the moment she appear physically, Meijo become fearful and stiff, something noticed by Naruto, as he simply gave her a small kind smile while patting his lap. Come here Meijo, don't be scared now I'll protect you if she dares to do something to you. Hearing this, Meijo nodded shyly. Her face becomes even redder as all of the feelings of the maiden inside her start to feel embarrassed, yet happy from Naruto's kind smile and his soft, gentle voice. Why yes, beloved. Uncaring about the stinky eyes of the ghost deity, Meijo dives down into the water and rests her head on her beloved stomach as he told her to do. All the while, she's pressing her pair of breasts into his groin and happy to feel something slowly waking up and inserting itself into her cleavage from the position she's doing. S-M-O-O-C-H. S-M-O-O-C-H. 
Acting as if she doesn't notice this, Meijo wraps her arms around his waist and kissed his tummy a few times before she simply nuzzles on said tummy, ignoring the water altogether. As a vile water spirit, she doesn't need to breathe air, after all. Ha. Huh. Naruto let out an amused snort as he simply let his hand continue to pet Meijo's head, happy to see the expression of pure happiness on her face instead of fear like he saw back when he first met her. Such a pure-hearted yakai yet full of hatred. I'll protect you, Meijo it's a promise. As the woman's face turns even redder than before and hides said face on his stomach, Naruto smiles. Such a shy Shikigami he got. Character Sheets. Name. Hachishaku. Age. In appearance like a mature but a youthful woman. Height. 80 feet 244 centimeters, she can control this and get as big as 812 feet 274 centimeters in height. Personalities. Mostly show no expression on her face despite her hands roaming her lover's body. Motherly, over-caring, over-protective, over-loving, and very, very clingy toward Naruto, she dared to fight an unwinnable fight with the legendary Onyoji when the man separated her from her lover. Appearance. A very tall and with an hergless figure and a mature, yet cute face underneath her wide, white hat. In her human form still ghost, she looks as normal as any human, were one to ignore her very large body, with a small nose, a pair of sweet black eyes, and cute lips with natural pink color. Her breast size in this form is G-cup. Except for her hat, she uses no other accessories. In her yakai form, her eyes and mouth become wide and show nothing but darkness. Where human stares into her face for too long, they will lose their mind forever, never to return. Her breasts are still G-cup in this form. Attire. A simple piece of white sundress one piece and long white gloves covering her arms and finalizing this, an unnaturally wide white hat that easily hides her face with its shadow. Sometimes, she clad her long legs in long white socks. As a ghost, this attire is her spiritual dress and she can transform it as long she follows two rules. One is that it must be white. And two it must be a dress. Abilities. As a deity rank yakai, she can make any yakai with less spiritual energy under her submit by flexing her power alone. She can even kill them with a simple glare if she wanted to. Basic skills as a ghost include passing through objects and possession of a living being's body. Though, for Naruto, she merely tied her soul to him so every time he moves, her ghost-like body will follow along. She can also teleport to anyone she saw. An ability that gave her the nickname, the Maiden of Murder. Her feeding, she doesn't need to eat much, considering her deity status. However, she loves the taste of Naruto's negative feeling of wanting to be loved and the positive feeling he excludes when he loves her. As a ghost above high rank, every part of her body, even her attire can be counted as a weapon if she met someone that can face her without losing their mind. However, her usual choice to use this ability is to transform her two hands into large monster scythes to rip her enemies apart. Likes. Naruto, Kid Naruto, Cute Naruto, Serious Naruto, Loving Naruto, Fuckable Naruto, and Clinging her whole soul to Naruto. Dislikes. Adult humans, holier-than-thou humans, monks, women that keep coming to her Naruto, and anything that makes her Naruto upset. Dream. To stay with Naruto's soul forever and ever. Making a servant-based Shikigami is easy. All you need is a few ingredients that you want to be the Shikigami's body and a few essences of negative feelings of humans. Fear, anger, etc., etc. However, if he wants to make his Shikigami more humanoid in shape, he could always put some positive feelings. Though, he doesn't want to do that, as the Shikigami will become somewhat weaker than the Shikigami created without positive feelings. As for the reason, he doesn't understand. Probably because Yakai is made of curses and their power also comes from their curses and hatred. If he puts some positive feelings into the Shikigami as he creates them, their curse will become weaker, thus they won't be as durable as normal made Shikigami. Probably. He isn't as good as his teacher when it comes to theory, after all. Oh well. Meijo, your kimonos, please. Under the tree where he had tea with the Hokage a week ago, Naruto has placed some beads of hatred he got in Chiruku's shrine. Around him, thirty or so beautiful priestesses can be seen sweeping around with charming smiles on their faces. Who are they? They're the Shikigami he made using Madam's hair. And no he didn't use any positive feelings in their creation. As for the reason for their humanoid figure well they're not humanoid, actually. With his eyes, it was easy for Naruto to notice that all 30 of them are actually masses of moving, black hair with glowing red eyes that moves only because of order given by him and Madam. Their human form is only an illusion he made by placing talismans on their backs. All humans except Onyoji will be full though, and thus, he now has 30 priestesses to take care of his shrine when he was away. Akakami, or changed hair, is one among the Bakamono series. Yes, here it is. 
after Meijo placed 20 folded kimonos on top of the table in front of him, she immediately latch onto his back while placing her head on top of his, watching with a definite interest in her eyes. Feeling this and the soft bosom pressing into his nape, Naruto smiled a little and places the beads of negativity on top of the folded kimonos. More like bathrobes, honestly. But they're still kimonos, and thus, they're kimonos no matter what their uses are. Evil. Take form. Fuse. And obey. As Naruto's red eye flares with spiritual energy, he did several hand seals and inject a decent amount of spiritual energy into the folded clothes. And thus, the beads disappear, fusing into the other ingredient. Then of you go to the forest of death and keep watch on the shrine there, report for anything that happens. The other ten, fly above this shrine, kill anyone who comes with bad intention. After a few minutes passed, now, in front of Naruto, 20 newborn yakai shikigami is made, bodies fully made of silk that was their base ingredient. In Momen, a rather mischievous and somewhat malevolent shikigami he has made, but it should be fine as long their feelings is as the same as Meijo, with her being their source and all. The 20 in Momen smiled in flirtatious manners the moment Naruto said his order. Their faces flushed with a blush that he knows comes from Meijo's shy nature. Yessssss. And thus, the 20 fluttered away, flying to their target locations, all the while, Naruto watches as they flutters until their forms can no longer be seen. Bite. Hmm. What is it, Meijo? Suddenly, the woman behind him clung to him even harder and bit his cheek, pouting on her face the moment he turned his gaze at her. No it's not hurt at all. The feeling is actually warm if he can be honest. Don't stare at them too much, or I'll become jealous. Ahaha, yes, yes. I won't stare too much then. I'll become jealous, she said. From what Naruto can see, she is already jealous of the shikigami made by her kimonos. Funny, but oh well. For some reason, every yakai female he made friends with easily becomes jealous when he gives the smallest attention to anyone except them. Not a problem, not a p-r-o-b-l-e-m. Later. Making money is not easy. Naruto already knew of this little bit of truth. Of course, if he were to be a ninja, money won't be a problem anymore, as he could simply take a mission or something like that. He doesn't want that. The life of constant death and blood is not something he wants. Come and visit our s-h-r-i-n-e. And thus, a few minutes after Naruto made his hidden moment, he told 20 of the priestesses to come down the shrine stairs and promote their shrine, so that more people will visit and pray in it. More visitors mean more donations. More donation means more money. He chooses to work like THIS. But their beautiful figures and beautiful faces, Naruto that hiding under the shade of a rather large tree, can see that Ishikigami easily gained positive attention from the humans passing the street. Though the attention they got mostly come from males instead of females. And this made Naruto snort a little bit. Made my madam's hair that contain her feelings, his priestesses definitely only have their attention and interests on him and no one else. Harem. Yes, Naruto knows he has a harem the moment he creates Shikigami using his lover's body part. Though then again, he already has a harem of 5,000 faceless priestesses of Aoi even before this, so yeah. Yeah. Thinking about Aoi, Naruto narrows his eyes a little bit. He should do his job too. And thinking like this, Naruto walks away from his priestesses, already having a belief that they can do their job to promote the Yuzumaki shrine without being under his watchful eyes. In a few days, if his shrine got at the very least a hundred visitors that come to pray with sincerity in their hearts, the shrine should be able to start creating negative or positive beads automatically. The Yoji, that was a shrine's main purpose, after all. Oh, are they your students? Just as Naruto walked through the village to find something that could interest him, Naruto met with Kakashi, the man with defying gravity hair that got the mission to escort him out of the forest. A few meters away from Kakashi, three newly minted genins can be seen, painting a civilian's fence with a pout on their faces, probably not happy about the job given to them. Anyway. When he took notice of the man, the man in question did the same and gave him a polite smile. Yuzumaki-san, I see you're back in the village. Yeah, just yesterday actually. How are you holding up, Haddock-san? When humans are exposed to vile spiritual energy for long, their bodies usually can't handle it, and they would faint, and at worse, they will die. As a jonin with experience on his belt, Kakashi is stronger than most humans, nonetheless, he is still a human. That's why Naruto asked about his condition. Ahaha, still a little bit stiff, but should be alright in a few more days. Hearing this, Naruto nodded, happy. A ninja is someone who knows better about their own body than anyone else, more so a ninja as experienced as Kakashi. If he says he should be fine in a few more days, then it will probably be more accurate than any doctor could say. Glad to hear that, and I don't know whether you heard of this or not, but I've purged all of the ghosts in your student's district. Yeah, heard it from him already. 
Though you should have purged my student's emo nest too instead of just sprinkled him with holy water. As the tone used by Kakashi is that of a joke, Naruto snorted, amused by the man's antic. No, not only that, actually. He's also amused by the fact the man is currently ignoring his student, Sasuke's rising anger. A few more pokes and the boy will probably explode. Anyway Yuzumaki-san, may I know what your diet consisted of? Probably also knowing that his student was already at the edge, Kakashi decided to talk about another thing. But. Um. Why the sudden interest? It was rather a strange question to be asked, after all. Your body right now is that of 12 years old, but it is pretty tall for someone of your age, so I'm wondering whether I could put my students in the same diet regime. True. Most of the kids around his age that he passed in the village are a few inches shorter than him. Compared to them, his height is like those of 14 years old and not 12 years old. Heh, I doubt they will have the gut to eat what I usually ate in the forest of death. What? Before Kakashi can't say anything to defend his student's pride, Sasuke stands up with glaring eyes and reddening ears, probably already embarrassed enough by his teacher's teases. And his glares, they're currently pointed at Naruto. Not really a glare of hate, but his eyes are definitely full of annoyance. But still. Well I suggest you don't continue, Sasuke saw. As the black-haired boy ran at him with a cocked fist, an invisible pressure hit him hard and threw him to the fence he painted, destroying it and the lawn behind it. Ah. At the very least, Hachishaku didn't kill him, probably also noticed that the boy's glare is not that of hate and just annoyance. That was kind of cool. Uncaring seeing his student was only thrown, Kakashi keeps a carefree smile on his face. And seeing this, Naruto's sweat dropped. Ninja. But then again, to the humans that can't see Hachishaku, of course, it would be cool because it would seem as if he has an automatic defense. And thus, Naruto shrugged off his shoulders. I know. With that, the two keep their attention on Sasuke that suddenly finds himself getting reprimanded by the house owner. What? It's amusing. Later. In the end, Naruto spent some hours to talks with Kakashi, and when they finished, he continues his walk around Konoha. And it feels strange. Years ago, when he was but a boy, the street was filled with glares and looks of hate. Now. Each of the people that years ago spat and glared at him can only stare at him for at most a few seconds before they threw away their faces in fear. Sad. Why would he be sad about this? If nothing else, he is happy with their fears. Fears are negative feelings, and negative feelings bred negative essences. And as on Yoji, it is easy for him to gather all of these essences to make negative beads. Truly, he should have just come back to Konoha instead of spending his time in Chiruku's shrine, purging the ghosts there to gather negative essence. Here, it is easier to gather the essence he would need for his plan. Ironic considering years ago he hoped that the villagers stops hating and fearing him, but now, he is reveling in their hate and fears. Really, really ironic if he may say. Ho po po. Don't kill them, it seems they've their uses, after all. Cannot resist his urge, Naruto in the end let out a small evil smile. One that he cannot hide, making the civilians around him becomes even more scared of him. More fear bred more negative essence. Simply said, the speed of negative bead creation is now doubling the speed before his smile appearance. Ha! Such simple-minded vermin, these humans are. Happy, H-A-P-P-Y. If it keeps going like this, it would take him less than eight months to get the ingredients for his plan. May the eternal night spread across the sky. After he said this, Naruto keeps his walks, albeit a little bit slower than before, so he can harvest more negative feelings from the civilians around him. Oh. Should he hum? Nah. Probably when the qualities of these civilians start to get low, only then he would hum, so they start to fear him all over again. Now that's what he calls a perfect plan. An A-R-U-U-U-U-U. No means no Hachi. No matter how disgusting these humans are, they're still a source of negativity for me you also want Aoi to be free as soon as possible, right? That last sentence silent her, complete with a childish pout on her beautiful and mature face. Hachishaku may easily feel jealous the moment he put his attention on another woman. However, she is in fact pretty mature and wishes him all of the happiness he could get. And because Aoi is also a source of happiness for him, Hachishaku begrudgingly accepts this fact and also wants Aoi to get free from her seal as soon as possible. But girl. Naruto said while caressing the soft and large hand on his shoulder. It took hours because Naruto walked as slowly as possible, but at the end of his walk, he already ended up in the madam's prostitute house, where the servant woman quickly greeted him with her usual flirtatious smile on her smile. He took notice of her small bit of increase in power, a sign of she must have been training when he was away. Good for her, then. Naruto-sama, I see you have returned safely. Madam will be overjoyed the moment she hears this information. Hearing this, Naruto smiled politely. There's no need to tell her. 
she should already know from the eyes of her familiars. That's so true. Under him, the hair monster is his Shikigami, but to a yakai like a Madame Kijaru, they're her familiars, creatures made by pieces of her body that has their consciousness, but still treat her direct orders as absolute. Many clones, if one could say. And yes, the Itten Momen is also his Shikigami, but familiars of Meijo. Aoi's priestesses. No, they're just reanimated corpses made by the bodies of the priestesses she killed in the past with her consciousness inside, controlling them with some limitation. In a way, they're also her familiars, though they're not living beings in the first place. May I enter now? Of course, sir. Please do so. As the women walk to the side and bowed in courtesy, Naruto nodded a little and walks into the madam's room. Click. And as usual, the moment he entered the room, the servant woman closed the door behind him and locked it, trapping him in the sea of hair that is the madam's room. And in the middle of this sea of beautiful, black soft hair, madam sits calmly, her palm on her cheek, while her eyes watch his every movement with narrowing eyes. You didn't visit me yesterday. Hearing this, Naruto smiled a little and walks in the direction of his Kajaru girlfriend. She's so impatient. But that is also one of the endearing parts of her, he guesses. Sorry, I was tired and decided to sleep. Both he and Madam know that it was a lie. But then again, Naruto was using a joking tone when he said that. And the moment he arrives right in front of her chair, Naruto took a few strands of her hair from the side of her head and kissed it with gentleness, his eyes shone with happiness the moment he saw her haunting, yet still beautiful appearance. Unknown to Naruto, patches of blush can be seen on his cheeks. She's just that beautiful to him. You're so sincere, Naruto. The woman in front of him said after she huffed a little bit. Despite this act, however, a few batches of her hair still tied themselves around Naruto's body parts. Neck, wrist, feet, and waist area. And the tightness of said bind is tight enough that Naruto's smile becomes somewhat wry. Most people would be suffocated by this point though. I aim to please. Before he can finish his sentence, Naruto felt the bind on his neck pulled him forward, and he immediately got assaulted on the lips by an impatient-looking madam. And he tastes blood the moment her fangs graze his lips a little. The kiss soon broke not a few seconds later, with the madam pressing her forehead at his with narrowing eyes and showing her glistening fang a little. Stop being so sweet or I will eat you up, Naruto. Ahaha, okay, okay why? Sensing the seriousness in her tone, Naruto laughed a little and sat on her lap and facing the same way as her, so that she can no longer see his eyes. He can't help the fact that his eyes are a window to his soul, so he can't really hide anything from the eyes of his girls. Servant, brew some tea for me and my mate. But the gruff tone, madam said to the servant standing outside of the door, getting a soft affirmative from the woman. And after she heard the affirmative words, Madam wraps her hands around Naruto's waist and pulls him a little bit closer to her. So close that he can feel the heat on her groin, something that made him smile a little. Oh, Madam. You're using my familiars as priestesses, why? There's a hint of confusion in her tone, one that Naruto took almost immediately. Though instead of answering, the blonde merely raises one of her eyebrows. Is there any problem with that? Why ask? From what he knew of her, Madam isn't a woman yakai that hates holy men and women that much, unlike Hachishaku that want nothing more than to kill them all on sight, so there should be no problem, right? And knowing why the boy didn't answer her immediately, the beautiful yakai places her chin on top of his head, inhaling the soft calming aura that he releases unconsciously. Nothing, I just want to know what's your end goal with it. Hmm. I just want to gather some money for myself. The hair binding Naruto tightened a little bit after the Madam heard his answer. She doesn't believe him. Don't lie, your heart beat a little faster just now lie again, and I will drain your blood as I fuck you until you are a broken mess, Naruto. Growling right beside Naruto's ear, Madam's threat made him shiver in both excitement and fear at the same time. Something that made him laugh happily for a few seconds. Really she's so pushy and sadistic that he can't help but get even more interested in her. And yeah, he knows his preference for his girls is whack, but his preference is his, no one has any say in this matter. The FFT okay, okay I was planning to hold a high Akiyajo on Kanoha village. You're not joking. Hearing what her boyfriend has said and sensing his normal heartbeat, Madam Kijaru widens her eyes in shock as she looks down at him, with Naruto himself merely waving his legs in the air and nodding. Yes he is not joking. What for, if I may ask? For Yoji to hold a high Akiyajo instead of Yakai Lord why? For what reason do a caring and loving soul like him want to endanger the whole Kanoha? I just want to unseal my lover, that's all. But the smile full of determination, Naruto tilts his neck backward so that he can stare into the madam's eyes. And in his eyes, she sees no jokes whatsoever. Gulp. The eyes of the pure man who will dare to fight against the gods themselves if it to save the woman dear to his heart. She thought she was already deeply in love with him. But seeing this. 
She can't help but feels a deeper connection with him. A few months later. Sitting on his shrine's veranda, Naruto is counting the money he has got from the people's donations, with a happy hum coming out of his lips. Like always, his priestesses are sweeping around the shrine and guided the people who come to pray. Him? No humans can't see him because he has already cast a few yokai illusions around himself. Anyway. He got a rather good amount this M-O-N-T-H. But this amount and the money he saved for the last few months, he should be able to create a rather large building where his priestesses could take rest. Of course, after he create a fence around the pond where he took a bath every day. They may be Shikigami and familiars, but the priestesses and the Itenmomen are also living beings with feelings of love for him because of the ingredient he used to make them. Every single day, when he wasn't looking, some of them were peeking at his body when he took a bath. And it kinda embarrassing, you know. More so knowing that Madam could also see his body from her connection with the priestesses. But. Um, who could create me a big building with minimal budget? It would be great if there's some wood-based yokai who he can ask to make something like housing. But because he knows no wood yokai thorough his life, Naruto in the end shrugged his shoulders rather uncaringly. Thinking about it won't finish the problem faster. When you're at in loss ask someone. The Hokage should know a few good carpenters with experience on their belts. I'm going to go to the Hokage's office. Everyone, please take care of the shrine as usual. Yes, Naruto-sama. To the human eyes, Naruto comes out of nowhere and spoke to the priestesses, which was answered by all of them at the same time. A rather haunting sight to most humans that come to this place for the first time. But to those who frequently come here to pray, this is a common sight. And thus, they simply continue with their prayer. Naruto. Once again, he's gone disappear as if swallowed by the very air itself. Oh. What's this? The moment Naruto arrives at the Hokage office, he could see that there is a rather tipsy-looking old man being guarded by Team 7. A rather strange sight. Oh, Yuzumaki-san, me and my team is going to our first C-rank mission. I see, good luck then. The man with defying gravity hair eye smiled at him and nodded. And after that, he and his team disappear into the wind, bringing their client along and leaving nothing but a few leaves in their previous place. Hmm. To think that Sasuke would be able to use the body flicker technique despite his lack the control over his chakra. He's pretty good. Not as bastardly good as him, but you know the meaning. Oh well. Gigi. Focusing his sight on the powerful old man that is the third Hokage, Naruto smiled at him, with the Hokage in question let out a small smoke from his lips. His eyebrow raised considerably. My boy, very rare of you to come to my office, is there any particular reason? After all, the only time Naruto comes to his office is the day he was reporting that he arrived at Konoha. And that's that. The remaining time they met, it was always Hiruzen that must visit the boy in his abode. Yeah, I'm looking for a few good carpenters. Not going to lie to his grandfather figure, Naruto said that to the man. Of course, his words got him a bit more of a raised eyebrow from Hiruzen. You know the shrine is not yours, right? You can't just do construction just because you want to, Naruto. Actually, it's mine you see. Thus, Naruto then began to explain to Hiruzen that he was trained by Abe no Seimei a few years back when he lived in the Forest of Death. And the legendary man in question promised him that the moment he's back in the capital, he will register Naruto Uzumaki as the owner of the Red Light District Shrine and anything inside. Of course, it means the land itself is his and he has the right to construct any building on top of his land. Ah uh, that's new, why you didn't tell me previously? It wasn't important at the time. As Naruto himself looks confused, Hiruzen in the end merely shook his head a few times, all the while, a sweat drop can be seen on the side of his head. Naruto. He's still mostly the same even after all those years he has experienced. And for this, Hiruzen felt somewhat happy. Character Sheets. Name. Meijo Shinran. Age. In appearance like a gorgeous young woman. Height. 5 7 feet 170 centimeters. Personalities. Sadistic and very unaccepting of humans except for Naruto, clingy, and easily becomes jealous when Naruto stares at other women. Appearance. A gorgeous woman with a charming and lustful face. She has luscious, shiny, and long black hair, and deep emerald eyes. Being Nuranago, her body is always wet, and this enhances her lustful aura even more. In her human form, she looks as normal as any human though inhumanly gorgeous, with normal height for a human and an alluring body. Her breast size in this form is E-cup. In her yakai form, Meijo is very frightening. Compassed of many female corpses, her real form is an ever-changing bulb of soft female fleshes. She has hundreds of pairs of breasts in this form, size is variable, but mostly D-cups to E-cups. Attire. A simple white bathrobe kimono that stuck to her body nicely because of her natural body's liquid. And yes, only this. Abilities. 
being a mid-rank yakai, she's easily frightened by every strong yakai around Naruto, however, this doesn't mean she is weak in any manner. Basic skills as Nuranago consisted of being able to control water body to some degree, she can use the water in attack and defense manners. However, because she kept murdering and eating humans, Meijo gained another frightening ability to control fleshes, be it her own or anyone she touches. The name alone explains enough. With a simple touch, she can deform anyone's flesh without their consent, though, this ability affects humans most easily. As for Yakai and Anyoji, their soul and body have an invisible barrier to protect them from such attack, thus, making her unable to deform Yakai and Anyoji with spiritual energy stronger than her. Her feeding, she mostly eats negative feelings like most Yakai, however, being a vile, water spirit, she took a liking to fresh fishes and eat them whenever she can. Of course, she is also taking a liking to Naruto's body fluid and licked him whenever he isn't looking. Likes. Bathing, fishes, Naruto, Naruto's body fluid, killing humans, female humans meat. Dislikes. Humans, human litter, dirty water, Akita Soji, seeing Naruto ogling other women. Dream. Nothing as of yet. Summon. Rename and her evolutions. 10. Normal looking foxes, but big. 0. Hayubi female form. Rise Kamashiro, Tokyo Ghoul. 4. Iruma Satsuki, Urasakai Picnic. 1. Akagi, Azur Lane. 4. Ah this is nice. Naruto said as he let his body submerge into the pond until only his head is the only one above the water surface, sighing happily. The fence is already made thus, there's no one taking a peek at him. Now, he could take a bath without feeling embarrassed being seen by his Shikigami. Well except for one, that is. Hopopio. Achishaku, the deity, maiden of murder is currently hovering in front of him, ogling his body without any shame whatsoever. But then again, as his first lover, she has the right to do so. Still. Hachi chan you're making me feel embarrassed. It's embarrassing as hell. And feeling like this, blushes bloom on his cheeks, making Hachishaku in front of him starts to coo at him and grope several parts of his body. No, this time, her touch isn't like a touch of a lover, but a touch of a pervert. The pervert that currently groping his body roughly and without any gentleness whatsoever. Though, before he can reprimand her, he feels an aura of one of his priestesses coming his way. And when the said priestess is in front of the door of his bathroom, she bows down until her forehead touches the ground, uncaring of the dirt. Yes, his Shikigami revere him that much. My lord, there's an Anbu agent looking for you, he said it's important. Tell them that I will need a few more minutes to get ready. Jeez, and here he just starting his bath. What a bad time to call him, Jiji. What a bad time, indeed. This servant understand, my lord. And after she said that, the priestess stood up and walks away from the bath to convey his words to the Anbu agent. Sigh. Let's go, Hachi. He has at most three minutes to clean his body, then another two to change his attire of course it would be quick, considering his two faceless guards are standing outside the door, after that, let's see just what his Jiji really wants. Let's just hope it won't be a waste of time. So you want me of all people to save them? Yes, unfortunately, I have no ninja strong enough to dispatch as a backup for Kakashi's team. Now across the hokage with his usual attire, Naruto is staring at the old man with the blankest stare he could create. And this made the old man flinch a little bit. I missed my bath time and morning tea time for this bullshit. Naruto is gritting his teeth in annoyance. And albeit the Anbu almost comes down to beat him up for using such foul words in front of the hokage, Hiruzen's raised hand stopped them. For all intent, the old man knows how Naruto loves his bath time and his tea time. I'm really sorry, my boy, but Kanoha really can't lose their last loyal Ichiha and a Jonin of Kakashi's caliber. Believe me, I will pay you generously for your help. Heard the sincerity in the old man's voice, Naruto stopped gritting his teeth and raised one of his eyebrows in a small curiosity. Huo. What are you planning to pay me with? Secret, but like I said before. Believe me, it will worth the problem you'll face. Hmm. For all intent, the old man never lied to him. And right now, with such sincerity in his voice, Naruto hardly believes that the man is trying to fool him. And though he really wants to know what the payment is, the man already said that it will worth the trouble. So it must be pretty good. Alright, I'll trust you Jiji it's a deal then. Naruto said with finality. And hearing this, Hiruzen stands up with a rather relieved smile on his face, happy that Naruto decides to help Kakashi and his squad. Good, it's a deal. And thus, the two finalize their deal with a handshake. A simple notion, really. But between the two, this simple notion held the trust that they have for each other. Alright, let's go Hachi, I will need a change of clothes first before we go. And with that as his last words, Naruto walks out of the Hokage's office so that he can return to his shrine to change his attire.
Behind him, Hachishaku followed his direction with a happy smile on her face. After all, why not? When Naruto went out from Konoha last time, it was like a date between her and him alone. And it should be the same this time. Hachishaku Pav. Meijo, you're coming with me. Of course, beloved. Hachishaku the deity, the killer maiden pow childishly and angrily the moment her one and only lover, said that to his newest Shikigami, when he saw her taking a bath in the pond where he was just half an hour ago. And again, as a vile water spirit, Meijo really likes water and spends most of her time underwater. Strange, considering her power is flesh manipulation and not water manipulation. The only way ones could notice her real identity is probably when they notice that she was seldom not wet. She's always wet, from the top of her hair to the tip of her toe. Something that made Naruto's eyes glued at her so many times these last few months, Hachishaku thought angrily. Uruuu, why not only two of us, Po? Hachishaku made her pout bigger, trying to make her lover see the sense and not bringing Meijo on their private romantic date. Ahaha, don't be like that now, my dear like you, Meijo is my Shikigami, isn't she? She need more experience in the field, you know. She knows. She knows it. But it doesn't mean she must like it. However, before she can glare at Meijo so the woman rolls over and die, her beloved Naruto wraps both of his hands around her waist and start to give her stomach kisses. Warm kisses that in no time made her forget about everything and knelt down, assaulting his adorable body with her lips. Ho po po po. Of course, as she assaulted her lover, he let out adorable moans that makes her even faster to eat him up. Several meters away from them, Meijo is staring at them with eyes full of jealousy. Ha! Eat that, stupid concubine. Unknown to Hachishaku, it was Naruto's plan to stop her hate toward Meijo. And it was a great success. Yes no matter how she was the one that kept assaulting him, Hachishaku is definitely whipped by her own adorable lover without even knowing it herself. Later, with Naruto. Okay everything is ready now. But the single wooden sword strapped to his right waist, Naruto's attire now has changed. No longer using his bodysuit topped by loose kimono, his attire is now somewhat a little simpler. Simple, long black jeans for the bottom and a black sweater turtleneck with long sleeves for the top. Simple, right. The jeans are one of the gifts he got from the madam. As for the sweater, it is one of the madam familiars, while Laoi's two familiars are left behind, being the strongest among all mid-rank shikigami he has just in case someone with bad intentions dares to attack his shrine. Bitten moment can kill civilian humans by wrapping their bodies around the victim's face, choking them to death. Ninja. Bitten moment will probably get cut and die. Akakami can wrap themselves around most humans and tighten pretty tight, and they can also absorb blood from living beings just like the madam. Against ninja. Well, they have a rather good chance, but it will still be a 50-50 chance. But Aoi's familiars. Yuana. The nothing women. They can rip a human soul from their body with nothing but a touch. Against ninja. What ninja? In front of the touch from Yuana, all humans are the same. One touch, one kill. That's why he decides to leave them in the shrine. To protect his house just in case someone strong enough to break through his priestesses and the flying clothes. Why he is still alive. Ha! What a strange question. Aoi is his lover, and thus, all Muana under her is also his lovers. They won't hurt even the single strand of his hair, simple as that. Ho po po. We are ready too, beloved. As Hachishaku clinged to his soul like always, Meijo also clung her soul to his and started to hover like a ghost, despite not being one. Hachishaku marked his whole back as her area. Meijo. She merely put her chin on his right shoulder and wraps her hands around his right hand, pressing said limb into her soft, womanly, and wet bosom. Her legs. She has made them disappear and makes her waist and anything below it look like some kind of hazy fog. Alright, here we go then. Thus, with two female yakai clinging to his body, Naruto ran, leaving a small crack on the ground where he was just a second ago. His direction. Wave country. Location. In a deep, dark location, a pair of eyes opened, and glaring red wisps escaped as they did this. Though, before more light could leak, the owner of said eyes blinked, stopping its flow. She doesn't need to see what she doesn't need to see. Thinking like this, the woman looks up, staring at the glaring sun with something akin to anger in her orbs. She remembers the dark night. She remembers the black sky filled with stars as the whole living beings were threatened by the gods. Oh, how she wishes to go back to that time to face her adversaries once again. The feeling of golden itcher trailing down into her arms, into her face, and into her body as she cut down the worthless gods one by one. It was the peak of battles. It was glorious. And it was not something that she can find anymore. The shame. But life must go on. And at the end of the day, so too will come the moment where she shall put down her sword and stop fighting. But is it really the time? No. 
Her heart still burning with a passion and urge to fight. Her katana still hums with the song of death. And her will is still unwilling to sheath back everything just because she's yet to find something of interest. For now, she has one direction. A student of aid no se me. But Naruto. Whoa. After a day and a half of running, Naruto stops, awed at the side in front of him. Sees. This is the first time he sees the sea. The wide blue sea awed him so much that Naruto was left speechless for a few more minutes. But in the end, he broke free from the trance after he shook his head. It is not a time to sightseeing. But alas. Naru it's beautiful, let's swim. True, this is also my first time seeing such beautiful scene, beloved. We should spend a day of vacation now that we're here. Left and right, both Hachishaku and Meijo are pressing him to spend a day in this place. And while indeed, he would love to do that, he has a mission to do. Tied to his soul, his women took notice of his decision and sent him double pouts, their large bosom pressing against his body nicely and sweetly, as both of them double teaming him to change his decision. Ha. Huh. Still no, Hachi, Meijo we have a mission to do. Who are they kidding? Yeah, they do entices him very badly actually. But he was never a man who would lose himself in lust that he forget his way. He is an Anyoji, a strong mentality is already integrated into his mind, body, and soul. They won't charm him that easily. As his two Shikigami suddenly sulks, Naruto is left laughing a little bit, amused at their antics. They're pretty similar. I'm going to swim. With his spiritual energy, he could feel the village across the foggy sea in front of him. And sensing this, he nodded, deciding to swim across. And as he swims, his two lovers can do nothing except follow him, still with pouts on their beautiful faces. Oh well they will probably change their minds in a few hours. If not. He could always stay here for a few days to play around with them so they wouldn't be upset anymore. Of course, after the mission is completed. Splash. Ah. My eyes. After Naruto successfully cross over, he screamed a little bit while holding his pained and hot eyes. And here he thought his teacher was kidding when he said the sea is literally salt water. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Naruto punched the sand under him to release his stress as he opened his reddening eyes slowly. It hurt. Po. Oh. Beloved. As his two lovers look worried for his well-being, Naruto let out a small, wry grin on his face. I'm alright, Hachi, Meijo, if none of you mind, why don't you two looks for Kakashi? I'll take a bit of rest under that tree. Maybe because they see that his eyes indeed look red and pained, the two in the end nodded and flew away, looking for the whereabouts of the one-eyed Jonin and his squad. And when the two cannot be seen anymore, Naruto dragged his feet until he is under the largest tree he can see and leaned his back against its bark. Sigh. Such a bad experience on my first time in the sea. Naruto said softly as he watches the beautiful, wide, and blue sea. Even something so beautiful can be dangerous. Thinking like this, Naruto stands up and went into a rather unfamiliar stance he just made up in the spot a few seconds ago. And thus he dances. It was stiff, it was unfamiliar and most important of all, he doesn't know where he should go from one position to another. But alone, with no one except nature as his witness, Naruto keeps dancing, trying to integrate the nature of the sea itself into his movement. At first, his eyes held frustration for every unsuccessful attempt. But slowly, yet surely, his orbs loses their color as he went into his zone. Focusing not on his sight, but also on his hearing. The blow of the winds. The rippling of the sea. And the sound of the waves that crash into the beach. After a few hours, Naruto is too deep in his dance to notice his two returning lovers, and they simply watch as he does something unfamiliar to their eyes. But, after a few more hours. Sharper. Quicker. Each movement that at first was nothing but a stiff dance, is now changing into a deadly kata intended to fight and kill someone. Each palm strike made the air cry. Each kick created a loud, snapping sound. And by the end of his dance Naruto swiped his leg, making his imaginary enemy fall with wide eyes. And when his enemy is in shock, Naruto glared with blank eyes. His palm is raised high. Third verse of nature crushing deep. Crack. And the whole beach is destroyed as the cracks appear across it. Seeing this, Naruto nodded to himself, happy and satisfied. To think he would find his third verse of orthodox combat here of all places. Ha. Huh. So surprising. Oh well, good enough. Let's go, Hachi, Meijo. Lead the way. Leaving the broken beach all alone, Naruto walks to his women with a happy grin on his face. And rather uncaring of the destruction he has caused, the two once again glued themselves to his soul and start to show him the direction to the house where Kakashi stays. Later. It took Naruto a few minutes of walking, but in the end, he arrived at the house pointed by Hachishaku. A rather nice looking house considering most houses in this small village seem to be dusty and won't last that long in the long run. Knock knock. 
Paddock san, I'm here to be your backup. Is that the correct way to call a hiding ninja? Naruto doesn't know, considering he is not a ninja in the first place. Fortunately for him, the man with defying gravity hair opened the door with an eye smile. And seeing him, the eye smile got bigger. How? Don't ask him. My, my. Glad to see you're the one answering our backup all, Yuzumaki-san, please enter. Okay. The man for some reason sounded somewhat different to his ears, despite having the same exact voice tone as Kakashi. Thinking it was probably his ears that got some seawater, Naruto in the end merely shrugged his shoulders inwardly. He doesn't care, after all. Step. 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 Eyes, we got a backup now. Sasuke, you probably already know my friend here, Naruto Uzumaki. And Uzumaki-san, these three are my cute genins. However, Naruto got his answer when he arrived in the living room, where he see the real Kakashi, while the one who escorted him in disappear into a plume of smoke. Ah. A rather neat looking technique. But probably will only work on ninjas or normal people, as he could take notice of the difference, albeit not that much just a few seconds ago. Nice to meet you kids, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I hope we can finish this missions as fast as we can. Kids. But you look like about our age, well, considering you're a bit taller than us, probably a year or two. The only girl in the squad said with a confused tone, her face mirroring the faces of her two team members currently making. And hearing what she said, Naruto simply let out a small, polite smile. Treated as illusion, just more solid. I'm actually 18. It was really a blessing that he is a bit taller than any of them and not shorter. Because if he does, this little girl with pink hair probably won't talk to him with such politeness in her voice. Oh well. Anyway, for now, why don't you all explain to me what happened and the also the current condition. After Naruto said this, the others nodded, then lead him to the chairs, where all of them sat. And thus, they explained the condition to him. About 20 minutes or so later, Kakashi finished his explanation. And in the middle of it, some people come down. Azuna, the old man Naruto saw a few days ago, Kakashi's client. Tsunami, the old man's daughter. And Inari, the old man's grandson. And being the polite guest he is, Naruto introduced himself to them politely, which they accepted with smiles on their faces. Well, not really for Inari, he guesses. But then again, he's bad with children. So, what's your plan, Haddock? Naruto said while slurping on the tea that the woman in the house has made, one of his eyebrows raising a little. Ah, a cup of warm tea on the seaside. Such a nice experience he's getting. Yes, I was thinking to protect Azuna-san, while my clone will train my students just in case Abusa and his accomplice come back. Huh? Well, aren't you chivalrous now? And here he thought that the man would try to search the wounded swordsman for the last blow before he recover. You know, being a ninja and all. Knowing what's in Naruto's mind easily from his expression, Kakashi eye smiled once again. True, it would be a nice battle plan. However, Zabuza's accomplice is currently an unknown in ability. And of course, we're also not that sure about how many more he has, except for the Senban user. Um so true, so true. It seems he underestimated Kakashi of all people. The man thinks at the very least two steps ahead of him. Impressive. How about you, Yuzumaki-san? It would be nice if you can assassinate Zabuza and his accomplice. Better yet, you could assassinate the main problem immediately, which is Gato. Hmm. Hearing what Kakashi have said, Naruto folded his arms on his chest and let out a normal-sounded hum, thinking. From the edge of his eyes, he could see the helpful eyes of Tizuna and Tsunami the moment they heard he could kill Gato. The Nari. He scoffed, not believing it. Oh, did he think of Gato as some kind of god now? Oh well. A few minutes later, Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Sure, he should have a few hundred bandits under him get his head for me, Hachi. Of course, N-A-R-U-U-U-U-U. The woman basically purred as she took some of his spiritual energy, building her already tremendous power, so much that the living beings in the same room as her, except for him and Kakashi, suddenly feel sick and fell to the floor. In a half a minute or so, Hachishaku finished taking his energy and flew away with an evil laugh. Do him. Her laugh is cute. WW what the hell is that? The heir of the Achiha demanded with a red face of embarrassment, eyes glaring at him, though, they lack intensity. And again, as a good teammate, he should always be upfront with his team members. Well, I just sent Hachishaku, the maiden of murder to Gato's place, she probably will start by killing all of Gato's bandits, by cutting them apart after they die, only then she will kill Gato and bring me his head with a face full of dread. By the time Naruto finished his words, Tazuna's family has their faces etched in paleness, full of fear. Oh, wait, even Sakura is becoming pale too. Something that made him raise one of his eyebrows in confusion. Why are you scared, girl? You're a ninja, aren't you? 
However, Sakura didn't answer his question and merely stay silent, too scared to even move her mouth. Seeing this, Naruto turns his gaze to one Kakashi Haddock. I think you should fix this attitude of her, Haddock. A ninja like this is not a ninja at all. A ninja who isn't used to death is like an Anyoji who can't see spirits of the dead. Basically, said. It is stupid. And knowing this too, Kakashi laughed a little while trying his best to defend his student's pride by giving her a small pat on the back. Ahaha, we are still working on these, Yuzumaki-san. Hearing this, Naruto nodded, then turned his attention to the only woman in the room. Tsunami-san, was it? Is there any room I can use? I'm pretty tired after my journey and need a short nap. No, not really. But he indeed needs to meditate so he can focus all of his minds to gather the negative feelings in this village. Such a gold mine where the people are on the verge of death and feeling so much negativity in their hearts, how can he miss such a time? He could get a good amount of negative ball with the amount of negativity in the air. Oh of course, Naruto-sama. Let me guide you to your room. She doesn't understand anything about him or the ninjas. But she understands enough that in a few hours, Gato, the tyrant that has been haunting their village will die. And the boy who looks about 14 in front of her eyes is the one that will kill him. Thus, Naruto doesn't really feel that surprised when she decides to call him with the Sama suffix. Suddenly, Naruto feels the wave of a familiar twinge of jealousy as Meijo wraps her hands around his head and covers his eyes with her soft palms, her lips touching his ear. And she's pouting. Don't stare at her too much please, beloved. For some reason, Meijo decides to show her jealousy and anger by kissing and licking his ear, something that honestly gives him a small amount of pleasure. Of course, with her tongue inside one of his earholes and her palms covering his eyes, Naruto cannot seize anything, and his hearing got cut by half. Nonetheless, he still stood and follows Tsunami by sensing the pulsing chakra inside her. Let's go to the bedroom first before he can kiss Meijo back. Of course, tied to his soul, the woman sensed his decision and had her anger and jealousy gone just like that. Her palms still covered his eyes though. But Hachishaku. Cut. 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 Head flies, limbs dismembered, humans screaming in fear. Ah, such a good day to be alive. Oh wait she's not alive. Ho po po po. Jaya. Where's the sound coming from? I don. Too much talking. Just as someone want to say something, Hachishaku stabbed her large scythe on his head, splitting it from the middle. And the man across the man she killed can only widen his eyes in fear and piss himself. She feels disgusted. And thus, she cut him across the waist. There are a few hundred bandits under him. That is head for me. Are the words said by her dear, adorable, lovable, and fuckable Naruto-kun. And knowing him for years, she caught the hidden message. Fill them one by one, as slow as possible, and create a negative ball for the unsealing of Aoi. And thus, here she is. Now, if she can be honest with herself, she doesn't really want to kill humans this slow. Yes, their scream is amusing, and the way they just wave their swords around at nothing is also amusing. But she honestly really wanted to kill them with her way. How? Cut them as fast as a tornado, and leave nothing but a pool of blood behind. Cut. 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 But then again, this is a request from her adorable Naruto. Plus, she could also brag to Aoi that her freedom is because of her, and this tease could last for eternity. So yeah, killing these people slowly despite her urges scream for her to kill them quickly and mercilessly will be worth the trouble. Ah. She misses fighting someone equal to her. Babe no se mei is not counted. The man used a strange talisman to protect his body from all of her attacks, all the while, he threw some more talismans at her from the inside of his barrier. And it hurt. He is cheating. It wasn't amusing at all. Po 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 po. Perhaps she should ask for her Naruto to fight her when they're back to Konoha, and for it to be amusing, there must be a bet. If she won, she will fuck him. If he won, he will get her to fuck him. Thinking like this, Hachishaku keeps chanting her haunting po across the whole building, terrifying the people inside it. For now, she has work to do. Hmm. Naruto has two types of fighting styles. Both are strong in their own right and can be incorporated into weapon katas. Orthodox style, where he would incorporate nature's movement into his fighting style. And demonic style, where he would incorporate the concept of negativity into his fighting style. The first one is to take the concept of nature and the joy of people living on it into his body. While the second is the desperate claws of those who want to lash at nature itself. Two clashing ideologies, but two sides of the same coin, really. Orthodox need him to experience the joy of the living, to feel the joy of receiving kindness, or the small thing like hearing the laughing children as they're playing in the rice field. Demonic. Demonic needs him to experience the desperation of the human being, for example, the extreme hunger when someone wanted to eat, but can't do anything except peel on the tree's bark and ate it to fill his stomach. 
orthodox, he merely reached his third verse yesterday, and it was also incomplete because he merely incorporate the sea, not the joy of people of the sea yet. As for demonic, he has already reached his ninth verse for years. The contrast difference between the two showed just how good his life was. And yes. Such styles are very different from the ones used by ninjas. But he isn't a ninja. Ninjas fight while concealing their intent, and martial artists fight using their intent to class their belief. It's just a difference in culture, he guesses. Anyway. Naruto is currently staring at the corpse in front of him. Beto's corpse. The man's blood is drained to nothing else in his veins, so he doesn't need to be afraid to stain Tazuna's house's floor. Now, why he's staring at the corpse? Well. Because the head is destroyed. And behind him, his adorable Hachishaku is staring at the ground with the face of a kicked puppy. She had lost control. And in such a state, she killed the man without leaving his head intact. Oh well. It's alright Hachi, next time, be careful, okay? Hopio. Right after Naruto gave his girlfriend a reassuring smile, she stopped her upset face and happily nuzzled her face on his hair. In which, he gave her a soft kiss on the nose. Alright. Let's bring the corpse to everyone, for now. Dragging the corpse by the scruff of his neck, Naruto walks down to the first floor. Hopefully, everyone is already back from their work and training. It would be bad if he show this corpse to Tsunami and her child without everyone around, after all. Akashi, sorry, but my Shikigami lost control a little bit. This is what Naruto said after he threw the bloodless corpse into the floor in front of Kakashi. And right after he did this, everyone's eyes becomes as if in trance, though Tazuna's family more so than the ninjas. Ah is this, really Gato? Sakura asked, face as green as a vegetable. And seeing this alone makes Naruto sure that a one, tiny push alone can make her puke out everything in her stomach. Such a weak-willed girl, she is. Yeah, I can't believe my eyes. But, you my sir, is the hero of wave country. Azuna said with eyes full of revere when he was staring in Naruto's direction. Though Naruto himself merely shrugged his shoulders. It's not me, but Hachishaku. If you want to pray, go pray to her, I don't have any intention to become the god of humans. He only wants to be together with all of his lovers. If this fulfilled, his next wish would be to fight any strong yakai. From the bosses of yakai to the gods themselves. Ah. Thinking about it alone makes his heart tremble with excitement. Ha 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 ha. Yes, yes, I'll make two shrines for Hachishaku-sama and you, Naruto-sama. After that, I'll tell everyone to pray to you both. As if didn't hear what Naruto have said just now, Tazuna laughed loudly and happily, his hand grabbing Gato's corpse by the neck, and from his grip alone, everyone could see how angry he is at the corpse that was once a living human. What is his plan with that? For now, I'll tell everyone of the good news, Tsunami, makes a feast for our saviors. Why yes dad. Right after the old man said that he ran to the village, dragging Gato's corpse like a champion. And Kakashi wasted no time to tell his three students to follow and guard their team client. Naruto. Naruto is rubbing his forehead that aches a little bit. Oh well. Shiro, search some water spirits and tells them to give us some batches of fresh fishes. I will give them some positive beads if they do. And yaa. From Naruto's shoulder, everyone could see a pure white cat with blue eyes suddenly appear, purring happily as it nuzzled the boy's hair. And after the cat did this, it jumped in the direction of the sea, passing through the wall, as if it wasn't a physical being in the first place. Oh, who are they kidding? When it comes to Naruto, he never called on physical beings, only the opposite. You don't have to do that, Naruto-sama. Tsunami said after she heard what was his order to his spirit, a few meters from her, Kakashi merely continued his relaxing time, drinking a cup of tea with his mask on. Inari. Inari ran to his bedroom. And Naruto honestly doesn't care enough about what is on his mind. Nah, it's okay, really. And I would like to trouble you to share those fishes later for the other peoples. After all, they probably would like to feast too. Oh of course, Naruto-sama. If just now she was looking at him as if he were a benevolent god incarnate, now she's looking at him as if he is some kind of ultra-benevolent god himself, blessing her with his presence. Huh. From eyes full of fear, now they revere him. Such strange beings, these humans are. After he thought like this, Naruto sat across from Kakashi, then requested a cup of tea from the woman of the house, to which she comply with a large smile on her face. And again, in her eyes, he's the savior of her whole village, what a cup of tea for it, right? Oh well, let's stop thinking about this for now. After he has his fill of tea, he then should find the demon of the mist and his partner. After all, it would be bad if the man come to kill Tazuna, just because he is yet to know about Gato's death. Later. Y-A-W-N. Maybe of his lack of sleep, Naruto found himself yawning a little bit as he walked through the rather dense forest outside the wave country. Well, not really dense compared to the forest of death. 
But then again, there's no way a simple forest can defeat the infamous forest which has killed so many people. He got some of his training equipment from those corpses, after all. After he sprayed their vile souls with holy water. Looking left and right, Naruto took the left side when he sensed a tiny amount of a living being's energy remnant. Zabuza. Is accomplish. Or just a civilian. Sad, but his ability cannot be used to track a living being with such precision. Send out his Shikigami. Nah, he has sent out Hachishaku and Meijo to find Kakashi, and the two are currently using their time to snuggle against his body, it would upset them if he ordered them to search for Zabuza. Plus, unlike his mentor that uses his Shikigami for mundane things, Naruto prefers to do the deed by himself, whatever it is. To his mentor, his Shikigami is his underlings. To Naruto. His Shikigami is his lovers and companions. It takes Naruto a few minutes of searching, but not long after, he found a male teen, dressed in a woman's attire. And as their eyes locked with each other, Naruto's eyes showed disgust. You're not a gay, are you? W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-W-
But, sure, it's not like stupid red eyes can copy intent behind a strike. Naruto shrugged off his shoulders from Kakashi's request. Most of his moves are simple, so simple that you don't have to have a pair of Sharingan to copy their movements. But, even if someone can copy the movements, they won't be able to copy the intent behind it, nor they can see the depth meaning of such a thing. They're ninjas, after all. Oh my, thank you, Naruto-san. And thus, one Cyclops eye smiled. Later. So, what are we going to see here, exactly? I told you already Sasuke, it will be a single clash between two strong martial artists. A bit far away from the beach, Kakashi is standing with his three students, watching the two people currently having a classic stare down a few meters away from them. Of course, he also has sent some cage bunshin to protect Azuna while his students are here. Just one. And, are they even being serious? They're using wooden sword for fuck's sake. Sasuke, just be silent. I also beaten you up with book and you don't seem too surprised. Bibi boo. In the end, the Achiha heir merely huffed and returned his gaze to the two facing down swordsmen. Really, it's just so stupid in his eyes. There's no chakra buildup, no movement, and nothing something as glamorous as the ground under them being destroyed. For all intent, it is just a stare down. But not after a few minutes, in the end, the female teen moved, such a burning glare can be seen in her eyes. Sasuke sees it then. A stab. A normal looking stab, without any chakra at all. But the blade split at the same time right before it can touch Naruto. For that single second, three wooden blades existed at the same time, striking Naruto. Of course, what is the most impressive is Naruto that was able to block two of them, deflecting the two strikes that destroyed the beach behind him with such clean cuts. Unfortunately for the blonde, the last strike hit him on the left shoulder, cracking the bone like a heavy hammer hitting a normal floor. Not like Naruto seems to care for such a thing though, as he calmly spun his sword in his right palm. Gulp. Curious, Sasuke's eyes went to Kakashi and opened his mouth. But, before he can ask something, he in the end decides to turn back his attention to the clash between Naruto and Akita. He can ask later. For now, there's no way he's going to miss Naruto's strike. He wants to see the power of the Onyoji who has purged all of the vile ghosts inside the Achiha's district. But Naruto. That was very sublime, Akita. I didn't know you'd have it in you. Naruto said, complimenting the teen about his age and getting a small bow of gratitude from her. Though, her face looks complicated. Thank you, Naruto-san though, I can see you should be able to block that last strike too if you were serious enough. Oh who oh. She notices that. Her swordsmanship may not be much. But she has a great perception. Let's not make it so it won't look as if he was playing around with her then. Well, yes I could. But I really wanted to see how heavy your strike were, and it didn't disappoint. Naruto said with a small, but an honest smile on his face. It may be easy for him to block or dodge all of her three sharp strikes, but it would be literally impossible for most humans, because each strike happens at the same time as the other. Something like that is basically a miracle if you haven't trained with a sword long enough. And yeah, he also wanted to see just how heavy her strikes were, so he's not really trying to deceive her. I see, then I'm ready please attack me whenever you're ready, Naruto-san. Okay, that strike you did is verse 1 of orthodox, verse of the sky, right? Naruto questioned with a small smile while doing a lax and normal kata. His eyes focused on one point and one point alone. Her chest. Right, where her heart is. Yes, my first verse of the sky is called Lightless, three-stage thrust. Oh, a fancy name. Naruto nodded outwardly. When he blocked her strikes just now, the intent behind it is pure. Free kindness. Her father, her mother, and her teachers. Her three miraculous thrusts are her tribute to the people who raised her, who loved her, and who taught her. Without those three people, Akita Soji won't be Akita Soji. And Akita Soji has proved her existence in this world by creating that thrusting technique. Then, I'll show you my sky verse. The orthodox fighting style is based on someone's positive experience. Of their happiness. Their dream for the future. Or just something as simple as their friendship with someone else. Naruto. His eyes become sharp and cold the moment he dashed toward Akita, the tip of his sword poised toward her chest, the point that he had locked on since a few seconds ago. This is. Akita looks angry for a small second, in her eyes, a telltale of someone who's annoyed after they got pranked. And thus, she blocked his normal stab. And she lose when Naruto raised his blade upward, throwing her blade away from her hand. Thud. My first verse of the sky is called stretching hand, haha, <laughs> don't think much about it. It's just a normal thrust, I tell you. Right after Akita's sword fell a few meters away from the two, Naruto laughed out loud in a carefree manner, as if doesn't have any problem in the world. However, in front of him, Akita's hands are trembling and her eyes widen so much, as if terrified. Well I'm sure you will snap out of it soon, probably. 
As the only daughter of the daimyo trembling, Naruto in the end merely shrugged his shoulders and walked away. There's Kakashi around, after all. A man could keep his eyes on Akita until she broke free from her trance. Why does she seem so fearful? Meh, how should he know? Oh well. With Kakashi and his team. I, I don't understand. Sasuke said after Naruto walked away from Akita. His mind is reeling, and he even keeps repeating the scene he saw just now several times inside his mind. But, he still doesn't understand. What do you not understand, my adorable student? Akashi said with an eye smile, his hands holding his porn book once again now that the two battlers have finished their exchange. That was just a normal faint stab followed by upward strike, right? So, why does that woman look so scared? The heir of the Ichiha said hesitantly. Well, the female teen isn't that scared looking, Sasu corrected inside his mind. Nonetheless, she looked so shaken after Naruto's normal looking stab. And hearing what Sasuke said, Kakashi patted him on the shoulder a few times. Well, guess you've got no talent when it come to swordsmanship, then Sasuke, glad we found this out so early. I mean, even Sai noticed what's so special about Naruto's strike just now. Duckhead are just too slow in the head, Sensei. We can't fault him. Anger. Anger slowly consumes Sasuke as his face turns red from his feeling. Seeing this, Sakura gave him a worried look. Though, Sai and Kakashi merely widen their stupid grins toward the Ichiha's air. Something that made Sasuke's anger went to the former almost instantly. Bastard. I will show you my fists. Takra circulating through his body, Sasuke ran toward the pale boy to beat him up, though his sensei merely took him by the scruff of his shirt and lift him, rendering him hanging in the air. Now, now, my student. Aren't you curious about what's so special about Naruto's strike? Tell me without any cryptic words. Sasuke said to his sensei with a childish glare on his face. Though seeing this, Kakashi merely eye smiled and let Sasuke's body faces in the direction of Akita Soji. The teen has broken free from her trance and now merely stares at the sea after she turned her body around. I still don't understand. Look where she's looking, and no it's not the sea, Sasuke. What are you Tao? The boy was almost angry once again, but when he looks seriously Sasuke then sees it. The sea is calm. The wind is soothing. But above all of those. The sky has split. With Akita. So this is how big our difference, huh? Akita whispered softly as she stares at the clouds that slowly returned to normal. It was impressive. It gave her another goal. And most of all, it was humbling. Aid no se may. The man is legendary on Yoji second to none, even Bard sang praises for the man every single day. Nonetheless he wasn't a swordsman. Looking down, Akita stares at her still trembling palm with eyes akin to that of sadness. Just as he probably saw a glimpse of her memory, she too saw his. The boy lived alone in a forest and bed his life every single day to searching for food. No human interaction, just ghost friends that every single day let out an aura heavy enough to make most normal people become crazy from exposure. The boy fell sick. Every single week, he would fell sick and had seizures from such exposure. He lived through it with nothing except his will alone. And then, one day a man appeared, intent to harm his friends and seal his dearest. He fought. His friends fought. But the man still won. In his defeat, the boy cried he begged the man to not harm any of his friends. The man is the strongest on Yoji, Abe no Seme. The boy faced many hardships in his life. So, despite his begging, his heart screamed that there's no way a human of all things would hear him out. The man surprised him. With a calm smile, the man answered him. Okay. The kind smile and a stretching hand of help, something that he never felt even for once thorough his life. The kindness. Skyver stretching hand. Such a simple name. Such a simple move. But the intent behind it. It's enough to make Akita trembles as tears gather in her eyes. What has she done all these years? She's the sole daughter of the fire daimyo. But here, she found out that the teen she thought was a foolish person that except a vile yakai of all things, actually had a story behind his action. She thought he was full of himself for being the apprentice of the great aid no Seimei. I understand, Master Seimei. Akita said as she bowed gratefully to the direction of the capital for a second. She understands now. Her swordsmanship is far below Naruto's, it is something she cannot deny now. She's grateful for this fated meeting between her and Naruto. She saw a glimpse of the peak. And now, she must go back to the capital to train herself, even more, to try her best to reach the same point. She took her status as the only daughter of the fire daimyo for granted. No longer. She will become strong. And when she does she will challenge Naruto once again. But Naruto. Whom do you feel it, Hachi? Naruto's question met with a shaking head from Hachishaku, her face nuzzling onto his nape affectionately. From his right side, Meijo is doing the same to his shoulder blade, while sending the maiden of murder jealous-filled eyes. 
How none of them sensed it. How curious this energy is comparable to that of deity. He said softly while staring in the direction of the forest across the bridge. There's someone there watching him. So funny. And so dangerous. He is not ready to face a deity level opponent, no matter how much his heart trembles from excitement from imagining it alone. Oh well. Let's hope the deity in question won't challenge him to a fight or something like that. Then, we shall excuse ourselves. Takashi said with a soft, eye smile as he and his students waves their hands to their former client, Tazuna, and his family. The mission has finished. Tazuna's great bridge, called the Great Naruto Bridge finished just yesterday, followed by a big feast full of seafood. Yeah. Thanks for everything, Kakashi. And do visit us in the future. Azuna said cheerfully with a large grin on his face, behind him, Inari waved his hands at them. There were no words said, but Kakashi gave the man a high thumb up to say that yes, he will visit them in the future. And thus, he and his students start their journey to return to Konoha. Naruto. He already went back three days ago, saying that he had something he need to do. None of them asked, and like a mysterious wind, Naruto has simply gone just like that, leaving nothing but a whispered tale for the people of the wave to talk about. Naruto, the hero who cut the sky. Why are you still here? Right after Kakashi and his students cross the sea, the sight that greets them is Naruto himself, laying with nothing but a boxer under the sunlight. Hmm? Oh Kakashi, your mission finished. As for me, I'm just spending my time on a beach to relax, you know. Opening one of his eyes lazily, to the eyes of normal humans, an open coconut with a straw, slowly went to his face direction, which he drank lazily. If not for them being witnesses when he cut the sky, none of them would probably believe that Naruto can do such a deed, seeing how lazy he is currently. Yes, I'm finished. And the bridge is named after you. Huh, neat would be funny to come back a few hundred years later to reminisce then. Unlike what Kakashi thought at first, instead of getting himself in shock, Naruto merely said something that made Kakashi do a double take for a small second. A few hundred years. Ahaha, uh -huh, I guess you can say that. Not really in the mood to ask any question, Kakashi merely laughed a little, getting a soft, mysterious smile from Naruto. Anyway, good luck on your journey. Naruto said for the final as he continued his relaxation, and seeing that Naruto is indeed going to do this, Kakashi can't help but be curious. You're not going to follow us. Here he thought that Naruto is relaxing in this direction because he was waiting for them so that they can return together. Did he guess wrong? Nope, too many hassles plus, I'm going to train my water Shikigami for a few more days here. But the twitch of his finger, Naruto made a blue, beautiful koi suddenly appear from the air, swimming in the very air itself. No not appear. It was always there, just unseen from their human eyes. The Komi, get me a few fishes again for today's dinner. And with another twitch of his finger, the spiritual koi swam to the sea and went into the depth, cannot be seen anymore by them. Anyway, as I told you all before have a nice trip. With his carefree smile, Naruto basically shooed them away from his area, something that made Kakashi smile wryly for a brief second. But then again, he simply nodded at the teen. Alright, and you be careful too, Naruto-san. Waving his hand to Naruto, Kakashi once again continues his journey to Konoha, followed by his three students. Naruto can take care of himself. With Naruto. As Kakashi's form can no longer be seen, Naruto let out a small yawn as his fingers twitched a few times, trying to get the feeling of his blood on his limbs once again. You two, how long are you going to stay like this? He said, wryly. On his left and right, Hachishaku and Meijo pressed their breasts clad in bickiness at his head, silencing him. They're pinning his arms under their alluring bodies. Of course, the two didn't answer his question and merely let out small giggles that made Naruto roll his eyes for a brief second. They're having a vacation. Achishaku is now wearing a bikini which consists of a classic pair of white bra and white panties. Resting atop her head, her usual hat becomes wider, giving shade not only for her, but also for him. As for Meijo, she doesn't bring any change of clothes. And thus, she has disrobed her kimono and tied it around her waist, making it look like a long skirt with a slit. Of course, this also means her breasts are free from their confinement and pressing into the side of his head. They have stayed in this position for almost a whole day. And Naruto honestly already lost the feeling in his hand since hours ago. But with the two pairs of large breasts pressing into his face, he cannot even feel any amber of anger. Is this hell or heaven? He doesn't know. Come on, you two. At the very least, free my hands. Naruto said to his two lovers with a small groan. After all, at the very least, he wants to feel only the heaven part without feeling the hell part. Shyness. Why should he feel shy when both of them are his lovers? Naruto is a blunt person, and he will stay like this for years to come. 
Fortunately for him, the two agree to his demand and change their position, so that he's laying on top of Hachishaku while Meijo is above him, the former's breasts become his pillow, while the latter pressing her breasts into his face. His hands. They're free to move around now. Ah, now this is good. The sun is setting, and Naruto popped his arms a little bit as his two partners play with the water on the sea. They seem happy. That's good. So, you've waited for a few days until Kakashi's not around what's your plan now? Naruto said calmly as he leaned his wooden sword against his shoulder with a raised eyebrow, unashamed from the fact he is wearing only a boxer for attire. His gaze, they're focusing on the forest. Then do please come out like a normal human. If you dare to throw your sword just for some sort of mental attack, I will personally destroy your weapon and kill you after I kill your accomplice. Naruto adds after a few seconds of silence, only to get more silent treatment. Something that made him let out a small sigh. Ninja. They're so damn stubborn. Oh well, if that's how they want to play. Shrugging off his shoulders, Naruto turned around and walked to the beach. Of course, not even two seconds passed, and he feel it. A change in the wind. Crack. And he grasped the flying sword by the blade and broke it with his grip alone, and from the said grip, a purple fire was emitted and burned the whole blade, leaving the formerly large sword as nothing but a single handle. The handle fell to the ground, and he crushed it with his feet. Thus, one of the supposedly seven legendary swords is destroyed just like that. The whisper of MM my sword was heard by him after he did this, something that made Naruto turn his eyes to the direction of the forest once again. His eyes are full of murderous intent. Scram, if you show me yourself, I will kill you. Whether they decide to scram or not, Naruto doesn't care enough as he walks in the direction of the sea once again. The water spirit he sent out is coming back. Ah. The INNER. Later. Stupid Zabuza and his partner are no longer around, Naruto thought calmly as he lay on the sandy beach once again, staring at the starry sky. Hanging outside his mouth, a lone fish bone could be seen. He ate all of the meat on it just a few seconds ago. I wonder what was his plan just now. Zabuza, he meant. The man hid well for a few days, but only dared to attack once Kakashi is far away and won't be able to help. Not surprising, with the man being a ninja and all. But still. What was his plan? Meh, he probably wants to take Gato's money from my hands. Did the so-called demon underestimate him just because the people he killed are simple civilians without any exposure to ninja's techniques? So stupid. Oh well, let the bygone stay bygone. It's not like the man will return once again just for some money. Bastard. The change in the wind jerked Naruto awake as he jumped a few meters from his previous position. And not a second later, a large dragon made of water struck the said place, easily destroying the ground and making Naruto turn his wry eyes to the left. And there he is Zabuza. Are you an idiot? The man is alone, but Naruto knows that his accomplice is nearby, ready to strike at the man's order. Just what are they planning to do? Are they really going to bet their lives for some money? Well not that sum. But still. Give me the money, or you'll die, lad. The man with the demon moniker said with a rather smug grin on his face and killing intent washing over the beach area. Killing intent strong enough that it can even make some chewing and tremble in their feet. Not Naruto. Is that supposedly to be a threat? Naruto said calmly with one eyebrow raised, angering the demon across from him. Yes I wasn't planning to attack you if only you share some of that wealth with the villagers, count yourself to be at fault for being too greedy, boy. Huh. So that's his prior plan. Steal the money from the wave villagers once the ninjas and he is no longer around. Such a vile plan. No wonder you're called the demon your plan itself is pretty devious, Zabuza. Grin. I don't need your compl. The man grinned evilly and dashed to Naruto's direction, hands poised back, as if he's planning to shred Naruto flesh by flesh with his claws alone. Naruto's reaction is only to stretch his hand forward, grabbing the man by his face. And on his face, a truly evil smile. I, human. With the strength that was hiding under all of his lean muscles, Naruto threw Zabuza in the direction of his partner. And said accomplish was quick enough to try to save his master. Try. His throw is strong enough that instead of catching Zabuza, the teen in female clothes follows along as Zabuza hit a few trees, breaking not only the trees, but also several bones on his body. His accomplish. No different, he also got some broken bones from his own stupidity. Are you going to continue now? Naruto asked innocently as he walked in the direction of the dust, getting twin glares from Zabuza and his friend. Unknown to the two, Naruto's fist clenches a little bit seeing this. Keep blaring and I will gouge your eyes and impale your head with blunt spears. Naruto is kind enough to give a verbal threat. But is dear Hachishaku. Not one to let her beloved get disrespected, again and again, her palm hover on Zabuza's arm. And then she clenches. Arg. 
Blood-curling screams soon can be heard across the night as the demon loses one of his arms. The only reason he doesn't lose his head is simply that Naruto has raised one of his palms, signaling Hachishaku to stop. She did, but not before she broke the bone on Zabuza's right leg with a merciless kick. The action makes him scream even louder than before. A few minutes later, Naruto stares down at the defeated form of Zabuza and his friend while sitting in a floating Hachishaku's lap. The normal human eyes, he would be like someone who sits on nothing. W what are you? Zabuza said while gritting his teeth beside him, his partner is tending to his wound with tears in his eyes. Pity? No, Naruto doesn't pity humans that easily, not after he gave them chance after chance to scram away. Why didn't you escape? Of course, he doesn't have any plan to answer the man's question. The man has lost any chance and right to talk with him the moment he spat on his kindness. Fortunately for the man, he no longer shows any defiance in his eyes and only acceptance. Acceptance that his fate is in his enemy's palm. I need it. For what? To help the rebel army to defeat the tyrant Ugura. Huh. So, he's going to use the bounty money from a tyrant like Gato to defeat another tyrant. Such stupidities. No wonder he's a human. Explain. And thus, the man opened his mouth and explained the Mizu's condition to him, from the start to the finish. And by the end of the story, Naruto raises one of his eyebrows, not showing any disgust or cares, despite the severity of the story told by the man. What? Why should he be shocked? Human history's already told so many stories about how someone decided to genocide some group of people for one reason to another. This story told by Zabuza wasn't a rare case in the grand picture. But still. He could respect Zabuza a little bit as the man tried his hardest to steal his money despite losing so badly. Many people fold and become desperate in a pinch situation. But Zabuza. He bites. And for that, the man gains a small amount of respect from him. Huh, that's so. Take this then and it is the amount I could give you without feeling annoyance. If you want to complain, go complain at your own weakness. With uncaring eyes, Naruto threw a rather big sack in Zabuza's direction, hitting the man's chest and making him groan a little bit in pain. It's a bag of money. Tenth of the amount Gato had in his treasury. But it should be enough for Zabuza's quest to defeat the tyrant that is plaguing his nation. Why are you doing this? Nothing, just to chive my boredom a little bit. That's all. Time skip. It's been a few days since Naruto kicked out Zabuza from his beach, and right now, he's standing in front of his three Shikigami that is Hachishaku, Meijo, and the newest, Kokomi. The first have played enough. The second has played and trained enough. And the last had trained enough. Merely playing around, Hachishaku didn't gain anything except happiness in these last few days of the holiday. Meijo's mastery over water has increased by a few good margins, while her flesh manipulation is still impressive as always. Soon, she should be good enough to rank up. As for his little blue water koi, Kakomi still needs a little bit more push because being a low-rank yakai, she's pretty hard to train. Why? Because some low-rank spirit doesn't have that much consciousness within their spiritual mind. Anyway. They had their holiday, and now, it's time to go back to Konoha. The Kashi and the gang should be back in the noon. How would their expression once they realize that he reached Konoha before them? This also makes him curious. Hachi, let's go. The O teleport where N A R U. As usual, noticing his intention, Meijo took her usual place in one of his arms and placed her chin on his shoulder, while Hachishaku floated until she was sticking on his back like a spirit haunting him. As for Kakomi, the fish was confused at first. But once he saw this, Naruto merely tapped it on its head, pulling the fish into the spirit realm inside his soul. Thus, his party is back to three people once again. Our shrine. Hachishaku can teleport to anyone that she saw without any limitation. And because she already saw his priestesses, she should be able to teleport them to their home. Home. A bitter word without Aoi waiting for him. But he can only do nothing except a bit down at his weakness until he gathers more balls of negative essences for now. Oka. Everything turned gray as the world itself stopped, something that made Naruto tremble for a few seconds. And then, he turns his head, staring at the woman walking in his direction. The woman's attire consisted of beautiful-looking white kimono, while her long black hair cascaded over her back to the ground and would have touched the dirt were it not for said hair hovering behind her, bang split from the two long horns atop her head. Her eyes there staring at him with such amount of curiosity. What is your reason to fight, little Anyuji? The very air itself trembled when the woman spoke, scaring Naruto and making his heart tremble, feet deep-rooted to the ground. Even then, his face showed a rather excited grin. Such a powerful yakai, how can he not feel any excitement? It is for me to know, and for you to not know, Yodohaim. Come. Come. With such a taunt, the yakai should be angry and start to attack him. Yodohaim. 
one of the heavenly treasures that have blessed the land since her creation. Despite being a heavenly creature, she's also a cursed blade said to kill the unworthy when her expectation doesn't meet. About 100 years ago, she also dared herself to fight against Akamagahara and killed several gods without taking any damage. Onikiri is the blade that cut all yakai. The Odohaim is the blade that cut even gods themselves. They're so unlike him. There's no anger. No hint of malice. The moment Naruto said his taunt, the woman shook her head and disappeared into the fading fog, as if she were never there in the first place. And seeing this, Naruto's grin becomes even wider. Such a nice control over her own expression and mental state. No wonder his teacher respects the woman very much. But as the woman disappears, the time around Naruto continues, letting him feel a small jolt of surprise, as Hachishaku's hands wrap themselves around his chest. And thus, they disappeared. But Squad 7. Jonin, Kakashi, here to report on a successful B-rank mission, Lord Hokage. The one-eyed Jonin said professionally the moment he arrived at Konoha, behind him, two of his students are looking upset. And again, to cut some time, they woke up pretty early in the morning to continue their walks, something two of the three weren't used to. The Kashi doesn't have any intention to babysit them, though. Alright, give me the full report. But the calmness befit of a Hokage like him, here is and let out a puff of smoke from his lips. And thus, Kakashi starts his explanation. And before we start our walk to Konoha, we saw Naruto-san on the beach. He said he was going to train some of his water-based ghosts there, I expect he will be back in a few more days. By the time half an hour have passed, Hiruzen nodded, happy for the full report given by Kakashi. Though, there seems to be some small misinformation. You don't need to worry about Naruto. He's already back yesterday and if I can guess, should be relaxing in his shrine, counting money right now. And I ask how? Surprise is obvious in the eyes of Kakashi and his students. But, with them doesn't have any right to ask questions when there's a meeting between their team leader and Cage, Kakashi asked the question. Though, after he heard this, Hiruzen merely shrugged his shoulders. I don't know. I thought he returned by walking like you. Ah. That's a shame. Kakashi said, getting a small nod from the Hokage. Yes, it is a shame to miss such information, but considering Hiruzen is pretty close with Naruto, the old man can ask the Onyoji about his instantaneous travel when they meet next time. But then again. It's probably a ghost thing. Kakashi, Lord Hokage said about Naruto living in a shrine. Does Konoha have something like that? The moment Kakashi and his squad walked out of the Hokage's building, Sasuke asked his question, eyes showing a tiny amount of curiosity. And seeing one of his cute students being curious, Kakashi I smiled. How can he refuse to help? Search it by yourself, Sasuke. It's an assignment for you three tomorrow. Groan. At the same time, the three groaned, including Sai that let out his own small groan of displeasure. The boy is showing more expression now that the team is a bit closer. Kakashi thought happily. Let's just hope the boy will regain his human feelings the more he spends time with them. For now though. Though, you three are dismissed, take a good rest, Jennings. And with a small salute, Kakashi flickered off to search for some food. He is yet to eat any breakfast, after all. But Naruto. Image. If not for his image, Naruto would laugh so hard by now the moment he finished counting the money he has. From the shrine donations alone, he has got a rather nice amount of Ryo that can easily take care of any sustain he might need for a few weeks. Beto's money? There's no need for words. Tomorrow, he's going to start to expand his shrine's ground by cutting down some of the trees he might not need. And once he had enough ground, he would call Tazuna for some construction work the man might take interest in. Naruto already saw the man's work in the Great Naruto Bridge. The man's work is ingenious. So, yeah. It would be nice if the man can help to expand his living ground. Happy, H-A-P-P-Y. Naruto hummed, happy to gain so much profit from one journey alone. Around him, his priestesses are busy guiding the incoming humans with kind smiles on their faces. Him? He's invisible to human eyes. And thus, he closes his eyes. Please bring me good luck. I hope my daughter gets better. I want to see that guy I met in the library meet misfortune. Prayers, good and bad. All of them reach his ears the moment Naruto closes his eyes and focuses, his index finger moves toward a person every time he decides to fulfill said person's desire, and his invisible Shikigami moves to do the deed. Playing God. Naruto already connected the shrine's Li line toward the forest of death, and every desire and prayer helped to break the seal of Aoi. In a sense, he made Aoi the god of this shrine. But, because she's sealed, it is his job to fulfill the prayer of the visiting humans, lest their number will decrease, seeing no visitors get their wish fulfilled. A few wishes fulfilled alone will increase the number of visitors. But if most of the visitors get their wishes fulfilled. 
the rumor will become so wild that more people will visit, even those who live outside of the Kanoha. So yep, he's playing a dangerous game here, seeing some deities might take offense to this move of him. Hell let them come. Some low rank deities won't scare him. Hell, even Yodoheim, the slayer of hundred Takamagahara deities, had come to him with unknown intention. And instead of fear, Naruto felt excitement at the thought of fighting an unbeatable opponent. It made his blood boil in excitement. After this, he should train some more. He refuses to let his body freeze just from seeing such a strong opponent. His body froze, yet his heart scream in excitement. It was the worst feeling he had to experience. No more. Dust you wait, Yodo next time we meet, I will pounce on you with all of my intention. And that is a promise made. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.